Good morning, folks. Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> We're gonna kick things off with some bounce talk right away. We're very close to having a highlights worth of games out of this one yesterday, so. <clears throat> Place a location. <clears throat> Honestly, replace Dream Dimension is probably something we're in for, huh? All right, well, that makes uh, what card we're playing this turn easier. gonna play these into here am i maybe we're doing this actually and then we'll hawk here and the following turn we could go thing thing here maybe i widow here bast here so that way um i'm gonna draw two things i can go thing thing with falcon on the last turn yeah this is better if i draw angel or two And the opponent see the spell you're going to use by clicking on the card. Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping that the lack of animation for the opponent was considered a bug. Yeah, and then if we draw anything other than Beast next turn, so Forge, Hood, or Angela, we get to play those middle, trigger Elsa, and then pick some stuff back up. Snap, oh, snap on. Hawk being big into kill near. Rado Lord, thank you for the 33 months. Welcome back. All right, so they're leaving themselves the option to get into killed later with Snow Guard. Not Beast. Rip. I guess we'll uh, do this then. I suppose this is, <clears throat> this is probably still fine, right? Like I can, I get to, if they don't Mobius us this turn, I get to Bast Korg uh, Chavez in the center next turn. And this keeps the Hawk nice and big. This is plus 15 over here. And their Angela could be moving. I'm inclined to spread out and play for all of them since they hawked because a number of these Loki decks have been playing Shang-Chi lately. But 21's not good enough if they don't move Jeff. Another, another alternative, another alternative I could have done here <clears throat> is maybe because Shang Chi's on my radar for cards to play around. Maybe I'm supposed to go. No, I guess I was say I could go like Korg Bast here and then Chavez middle, but that doesn't work, right? Mm, I guess they had, they had priority, right? I could have gone Bast Korg here and then Chavez here, but then I'm just a coin flip to the Jeff. I don't know. I don't know that we end up better than a coin flip because of the Shang Chi. Eat it. We needed to hit the uh, the 
not not beast the turn prior so we can trigger Elsa a couple times and play from our locations better. Like Nico a negative dead bullet but sweet. Yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> Chance potential on anything that has destroy synergies, basically. Um Yeah, I think that's like her second best mode. We'll go Nico into Forge, a demon into Korg. this, hoping to draw Beast or Falcon next turn. Ah, uh, everybody's favorite game in Marvel Snap. Where are they going to turn for Professor X, babe? Shouldn't have guessed middle. <laughs> I guess they can't. They can't. I, I mostly my Darkhawk play was mostly me saying I didn't. I didn't guess for the Professor X. I was playing for the they're not going to Professor X. Be right. Because obviously they can't Professor X the left, and they're just like taking fucking forever to play the game. So I'm gonna leave because we're likely dead. Escaped. I'd be very surprised if anything gets adjusted in this deck this week, which I think is unfortunate. Toxic prison deck is toxic. Born in RL. Oh, you know what? I should probably... <clears throat> I should probably, uh... Go play Conquest. The latter's at a stark lack of variety. Comps app needs a balance patch real bad. Or an OTA update. Like we're gonna get tomorrow. Wanna turn anything into a demon? Um... Maybe? I could do, I could do this. And then Demon the Falcon. I don't hate, it's less resource efficient though. That's the interesting thing Nico puts on you, right? Like it's like, do I want to prioritize getting her good spell or do I want to prioritize being energy efficient here? I think I just want to be energy efficient. I'm just gonna Black Widow them. Obviously, Black Widow doesn't cut them off of any board space because there's a Death's Domain. You get two power and you get two power. Everybody gets two power.
Whenever you're torn between getting two different cards and spotlight caches, my piece of advice would always be tie break whichever card, um, whichever spotlight cache has more cards you're missing. Do I want to be able to compete in Death's Domain? Is Death's Domain being turned off good or bad for us? I'm actually not sure. I think I want to compete in Death's Domain. That's interesting. I would have thought the Bast was going to die there, but it didn't. Is it crazy to <clears throat> hood them so I don't have priority going into the next turn? So I'm less likely to have priority? I don't know. I'm running. I'm running out of I'm running out of time. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. I don't know. It could be right to deploy hood somewhere to like try not to have priority here. Oh, oh, I missed that. Oh, that was a, you're going to kill monger me snap. Okay, sure. Gamer. I missed that. I'm going to not have draw Chavez now though. Oh, it's also a their Mobius that you snap. But that's also not a big deal. Yeah, you just absolutely not in. Just played Mobius, played Killmonger, and we just like super ducked their tech cards. I guess they were worried about us mobiusing them. Uh, getting to copy uh, Eight Power Angela as a second threat, kind of sick. Do you think they thought it was turn six? Maybe, I don't know. I could have been playing around stuff. They could have also mixed up the turns, yeah. Is Nico destroy good? I don't know that anybody's played enough to know that it's better than the other cards in that deck list or not yet. <laughs> Is Nico worth 6k? Um, If you like playing decks like this one, I think so. I, I expect Nico to be a format staple. I think she's going to be very reasonable in very many decks. 
Uh, hands like this, I think, are worth turn one steps. If you don't want to, uh, if you want to maximize what you're doing. Mother of God. Now, they could have, um, they could have a Mobius. So not, not guaranteed here. Sick line. But Nico gives us a good spell so we can play her and bounce it next turn. Random location. Not great. want to get rid of Bifrost. Yeah, baby. <clears throat> I guess that I guess that takes three points away from them, right? It's probably fine. I want to do this last just in case it's like Death's Domain. I don't want to lose my beast. Okay, and they are uh, Phoenix Force, which seemed likely. But that means uh, Phoenix Force means Black Widow is extra good here. Wait a turn to play Widow, so that way, um, so that way I can uh, play her as a three power thing. Power. If you play your next card, add a copy of it to your end. Oh, that one's good. Okay, so let's go Widow You, Nico, Demon, Vibe. There's no reason to do anything else. I just ignore the Hellfire Club. Just spread like this. Tiebreaker. The opponent needs a priest. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of demons on the board. I love that the crackle effect builds up more the more you bounce it. I'm pretty sure that's a bug, but it's a fun feature. I mean, he's played Viper. I have not yet. We only played two decks yesterday. The cards release at 2 p.m. Central. People like keep coming in and ask me if we played much. I've only played two Deco decks. We're gonna play her all day today for like eight hours. We're gonna get to a bunch of stuff. 
We only played two things yesterday because I was only live for like two hours after the card released. I only, I only streamed till like five o'clock in the afternoon and cards, or five o'clock in the evening, and cards release at, uh, cards release at two o'clock. Sure, he enjoyer. So, fun fact, uh, this opener is actually our best possible opener against Shuri because this deck doesn't have enough numbers, typically, to keep up with the numbers Shuri outputs. So, our best chance to win this matchup is to um, make sure their draw just doesn't come together. Oh, well, that's cheating. They're not playing Shuri. I've been had, Jet. Duped. Uh, make sure to report them after the match. Oh, we did stop the, the what's it called draw, right? We gave them a 0-3 because they bested, but you're right. We did cut them off with an eco draw, which is noteworthy. Ha <laughs> an extra eight power hawk. Yeah, probably did here. I think I'm gonna punt here. And then Angela is six, seven, eight, nine, thirteen goes here. That's probably not enough. I think I do this, hope that this is enough middle, and then Chavez writes enough there. Alright. I was gonna say, we need the beast to go middle, but actually that doesn't matter, right? They have a 13 power <coughs> hawk in their hand that's free. And their beast went left anyways, so we're guaranteed to be dead then. Godly, thank you for the entire year. Did you a sword to go with that shield? Welcome back.
Plus Prince of Dex with Deco's release. We've only played a handful of games, but <coughs> Theodos has definitely been very present in them. Thanos. Thanos was likely the best deck, and Nico goes cleanly inside of it, so. I don't really expect much movement on that front. Oh yeah, news bad for Hawk. Yeah, I'm probably retreating anyways. I'm not sure that it matters. What are you cutting the Thanos deck for Miko? Oh, your least favorite card. This trick deck isn't fun and our opponent's playing glacially, so I'm gonna bounce to the next one. Escape. The Thanos, the Thanos deck is more similar to a magic deck than a snap deck, not only because it's a toxic prison deck, but also because, like, 18 cards versus 12 means that... 18 cards versus 12 uh, means you're less likely to see the change that you make. In your opinion, why are toxic archetypes like prison so popular? I mean, they're not popular because they're toxic. They're popular because they're good. Turn 4 Professor X is objectively powerful. The deck is popular because it's arguably the best deck in the format. Maybe second best, one or two. All right, gamers, it's about that time. I'm gonna hit the add roll button. We'll be back with some more bounce here in 120 seconds. Catch you on the flip side. If you're on the YouTube side, tap the like button. 45 YouTube viewers, only 20 likes. I believe in your ability to find the button, despite what your significant other tells me. The hardest button to find. Second hardest button for some people. Jeff, do you like Twitch chat more than you chat? It's a low bar, but on average, Twitch has, tends to have higher quality commentary than YouTube, yeah? I had someone write me, I kid you not, two paragraphs yesterday in a YouTube comment complaining that I wasn't all that and I didn't make the deck that was in the video that I was posting a highlight of. They were just very, very upset that I had the audacity to go on the internet and download a deck. I'm just like, it's 2023, Chud. Like, what is your problem? Oh, go be an attention-seeking wanker in someone else's comment section like holy crap two paragraphs two paragraphs chat just actually unreal you wouldn't download a cube <laughs> hmm. You all see the video and the news for Nico, like in the news section. I feel like the news section still only half works on PC.
Snap wanted to do in the Abbey. Is that any Nico Darkhawk bounce? Nah, I'm not sure I'm gonna play any Nico Darkhawk bounce. Probably not worthwhile. Ooh, getting their Killmonger out of the way right now is uh is good. I mean, their draw, their draw start here is good too, but not having to play around that as we head into the late game is phenomenal if our draw comes together here. You know what's not phenomenal? That Nico spell. Rip. How long did it take you to get to where you are streaming? Uh, I, when I wake up in the morning, it takes me, I don't know, like 60 seconds if I'm quick to get down to my basement. I don't expect Mobius out of this deck. I probably want to Bast. I think I'm fine knocking Loki down a couple power to pump these up. I'm actually gonna put Elsa over here so that way I can potentially beast this Black Widow path. The mm. maybe turn three Lady Death Strike is unfortunate. Need a, need a beast or a falcon next turn, chat. And there's only, there's only three cards in our deck we can draw, and two of them are beast and falcon. <sighs> so here's open. They have 12 power Deadpool in their hand currently. Play your next card, double this card's power. Okay, so I want to go Forge into Nico into Beast. And that actually, I probably want... I probably want a Loki this turn. Because so I'm going to draw Chavez next turn. I don't, I don't want to Loki my hand. I'm not going to have a window to play Loki on. I'm going to play him here, I think. Yeah, let's do, let's do this. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a 10 power Nico in my hand, right? Ooh, I think I think Nico landing on Forge there was actually our best possible, right? So this is six here. I think I want to spread out and play for all of them. I guess this minimizes. I guess I want to get more um, Elsa bonuses though. This is probably good. We could lose like an Arnim Zola flip, I guess, but this beats like a null. Null plus death could get us, I suppose. Or just leave it in, sure. Victory.
the less sarcastic answer to the question earlier, how long did it take you to get to where you are streaming? Um, I assume you mean like how long I've been making content for. So I've been streaming on Twitch for over a decade. My channel's been a Twitch partner for over eight years. And I've been doing this as a full-time job for a little over six years. But one of one of the things I always like to uh, like hammer home for people about like this job that I do as content is it's not it's not like you could just show up every day and put in the work and you're guaranteed to find success, right? Like my stream took off in large part due to factors that were outside of my control. It was a lot, it's a lot of right place, right time type stuff. I also I'm also good at what I do and I work hard. But being good at what you do and working hard does not mean that you're going to succeed. As is the case in many parts of life. Sand is super solid. That's after you play your next card, add a copy of it. Yeah, I want second Elsa, right? Just always. This makes our curve a little bit awkward, but second Elsa is real, real good. Second Elsa is absurdly strong, yep. Casual Night Power Falcon, no big. I mean, that's actually kind of great, right? I get to go Nico in to trigger this, kick it center, trigger these, kick it center, then we'll Angela here. That good enough though, actually. What if I just fully bail out of here? Fine, what if I do this and just give up on Stark Tower? I think I'm into it. I guess having a 10 power beast is bad into Shang-Chi. All systems go. I gotta watch out for Eliath. Do I? Do I though? Eliath oh. Oh. makes me hate everything, chat. I just can't play around that card, right? Wait, I can play around Eliath, right? Because I just already have a bunch of points here. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. J 
Jeff is boobed, yeah. Final answer. Oh, I didn't think about the silk. Okay, never mind. We're lucky. <laughs> there were there were permutations of this. I could have I could have lost to the silk ending up, right? Oh, that's interesting and not what I expected. Nico's demon removes all bonuses. I did not realize that Nico's demon would remove all bonuses. That's a great game to learn that in. Well, so I know, I knew that Nico, I knew that Nico's transforming into a demon would happen after all modifiers. I did not know that it would remove bonuses on the cards. So I thought basic, I thought changing into a demon was going to change the base cost and base power, but it, I thought it was going to keep the plus threes. That feels inconsistent. I feel like it should keep the modifiers. Yeah, so it, it entirely replaces the card. It doesn't transform it. So becomes a demon. I thought it was trans. I, in my mind, it was doing like a transform, meaning you keep everything that's on the card, but it just turns into a demon as the base card. But what it actually does, it replaces what's there, including modifiers with a demon. Yes, it functions like Gamma Lab. That's a good shout. Yeah, Gamma, Gamma Lab loses, loses modifiers too. Gamma, Gamma Lab's a good call. I wasn't thinking about that comparison. To people that are shouting questions about why didn't I play Falcon, <clears throat> there wasn't a way for me to play Falcon and trigger Elsa here and here because Falcon would have bounced Bast back to my hand and I needed the extra stats in this path. So like, I don't know, maybe I could have ended on Falcon here and then like played Nico Demon here, maybe, but that's what I could have done that. I could have gone Angela, Elsa, Falcon here, and then played 1-1 one, one here, I suppose. That yeah, that would have been possible. You had to play Falcon last. Oh, I should I should play Falcon last after I make a demon here. Fucking Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> they, they even they think gamers think. This is why this is why the bounce deck doesn't make for popular YouTube content. Because the average gamer is like, oh, I should play Falcon last so I get the bonuses. And just bounce all their shit back to their hand that they pumped up. <laughs> Ooh, it's tough sledding, gamers. It's tough sledding. Fun fact, chat. Nico can let us change deep space. I'm just playing Elsa to the unknown. Do I want to make a copy of something? 
know that I want to make a copy of either of these. Copy of Beast might be hot. Let's do, let's do this. It'll be a copy of six power beast too. If he if he lives. They might like Phoenix Force Center or something though. Oh, they have Iron Fist. Oh, they're a straight up move deck. Interesting. So, I know that this will bast the demon, but it also bast the hood, and the hood currently costs me zero. I think, I think this is the line. And then next turn, I can play uh, demon, hood, Korg, Elsa, Hawk... I think this is the line. Passing the hood is better than not passing the demon, yeah. Yeah, I just need to call out that I'm doing this intentionally, because otherwise Twitch chat's gonna like roll their their face across their keyboard streaming order at me. Super rewarded for my choices, huh? So I'll put this here and I'll put this here. And then next turn, we could go Elsa, Hawk, Korg, Demon, Demon. Oh, oh, and this is, I can execute the suggestion from last game now, and I can play Falcon last, right? That's the line. Am I giving up the center here? I might just be giving up the center, actually. This is actually, actually this. Yeah. Victory. Is Forge Demon at the end better? Well, this is deep space, so Forge doesn't do anything there. Is Forge more than Korg? Uh... Forge is plus two, and so is Korg. Korg. Korg bumps up Hawks. That's a wash. And Korg has a better split than Forge. Also, Korg is free. Korg is zero. Can you explain how Nico can change deep space? Uh, one of Nico's spells says uh, after you play your next card, replace that card's location. So if you play Nico on this spell, and then you play your next card into deep space, she'll change the location. 
Can you explain why you're not running loot? Because my mama didn't raise no coward. The less sarcastic answer is after looking at this deck more and thinking about it, two things. One, Shang-Chi has been more popular than Shadow King lately. Two, the only card that really gets hammered by Shadow King in this deck is Angela, and we have plenty of other stats. So I think we just play around Shadow King by just like putting numbers in every path. They're all just like, this, these deck, there's just so many cards you want to play in this deck. Like, this is a bounce deck, right? And I don't have room for Kitty Pride or Hit Monkey or Bishop or Collector. Just like, your slots are so precious. There's so, there's so many good cards you want to play. Do you favor this build over the Collector Bishop Hit Monkey? Yeah, I think this is the best bounce variation. You don't have Luke Cage. Have you thought about swapping Bass for something else? No, you're fucking insane if you want to cut Bass from this deck. Let's not, let's not hold hold any punches here. When you're looking, are you looking at the power lines of the cards in my deck? Bass is absurd in this deck. It's very, very good. Oh, they overfilled their hand and their kitty didn't come back. Well, that's great for us. So what if I do this? <sighs> and then next turn, I go Darkhawk, slides over. Actually, what I do is we go Elsa Bloodstone... We go Elsa Bloodstone into... No. I want to go Elsa Bloodstone into Falcon here. And then Korg comes back to my hand. And I can Korg plus Hawk next turn. Yeah, that's the line. Final answer. Oh, Forge is coming back too. Yeah, that's fine though. Okay, they have a Black Widow that doesn't matter. An Asteroid, Asteroid Am yanks us out of the Vats here. Oh, I suppose we're gonna eat shit to a Shang-Chi, right? But there's seven cards in their deck and they've been overfilling their hands. There's a real chance that they don't have room for that. Do we want second Falcon or second Elsa? That's a good, that's a good. I don't think I have time to play either, so I don't think it matters. But the second, the second Elsa would probably make them think more. Is a good, a good shout. This card looks great with the Infinity Border. Looking forward to getting her with a gold background.
Wait, they decided to let me into... Kill? That's gotta be wrong. Huh, their kitty was 16, 17. They had nine. She's 26. 26 is 32. Oh, it's gonna get sucked into Astrid M anyways. Yeah, that's a good call. I think it's just this to play around their multiple kitties. I guess they could also play a bunch of... We're kind of in a coin flip, right? Because they have two big kitties. If they play double kitties here, we could lose. Am I supposed to do this? Oh, Asteroid's also off. Yeah, damn it, shit. I, I think this is the line, but it's definitely a flip. Why not 12 power Falcon? Because Forge, well, I guess it would have bounced the cord. Would 12 power Falcon would have beaten their big kitty in the middle, right? Yeah, it would have. That's a good shout. Yeah, I'm gonna lose this to another 26 power kitty. I would have beaten it with the Falcon. Yeah, good shout. I was thinking I didn't want to shrink here, but the the Falcon being bigger would have meant that. No, it wasn't even a tough call. I just didn't think about it. The Falcon being bigger would have meant that we play to all three better. And we lose to we win here. We're guaranteed to win here with the big Falcon. And then we win whichever of these, they don't play their other big kitty too. There's a world in there where I play the big Falcon here and they go kitty, 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 but then they don't get the Elsa bonuses and we're fine, right? It's the reason that the Elsa copy would have been better. Would it have been? It would have been a smaller, it would have been a slightly smaller stat line, right? At 11. I don't I don't think that was actually relevant, Duck, in the slightest. I mean, looking at a game with cloning bats and saying this is a reason that Elsa's unbalanced is like a pretty peak Twitch chat take. Like, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Elsa certainly should probably should, should certainly be plus two. Is it ever Darkhawk mid? I don't think so. Darkhawk mid uh, loses to them just playing left and not playing anything right. The correct play is definitely play for all three. Do I want to bounce Bass or do I want to bounce Black Widow plus these two? I think I'm going to play, I'm going to risk it a little bit and play to the right. So that way I can like Nico Hood and then beast these, uh, these three back. Honestly, that ends up not being a big deal, right? Cluttering, cluttering more of their board here is fine. And then them giving me the Widow's Bite is whatever because um, they were going to get bonus from it in Nidvalor anyways. I genuinely think 
Whenever I hear the suggestion Elsa should only trigger once per turn, it shows that people really don't understand which Elsa decks are good. Like, that doesn't remotely fix anything that she does. It's such an awful suggestion. Like, the Elsa decks that are good are playing Kitty Pride or cards that move with her, and they're already basically only triggering her once per turn. They're just triggering her lots of times over the course of the game, triggering her once per turn. And sure, like, they'd lose a couple off the very, very top of it, but that's definitely not the primary thing they're using her for. to do here. I don't really have a good way to get stats going in a lot of these spots. Part of me wants to do this. I'm not going to play Chavez next turn anyways. Do I just do this to like make my, make my Widow's Bite? Three power. I should play, I should play my Demon out too though, right? Demon goes to three, does it? Pretty sure I got that right. Killmonger, never heard of him, chat. We corked him. We corked him twice, I believe. Okay, Boomer. These are content cubes. We're gonna spew. Come and get it. What a fucking psychopath. Do Boomer snap me on this play? And then emote me afterwards? Like, they won both sides by one? Would I... Would I have won... Would I, I have, I'd have won this with my other, I'd have won this with my original play, right? Yeah. Yeah. They actually, they actually would have lost if, um, if I would have, so I, I swapped these at the last minute cause I wanted to be better into Killmonger. But I should have just accepted that one, a lot of these builds don't have room for Killmonger, and two, we were probably dead to it regardless. 
So if I would have turned the bite into the demon, this would be a two power Korg and then we would have beaten them by two over here. It's also funny that the Black Widow buff lost us this game too. If we would have, this would have been a zero power thing, we'd crunch them on the breaker. Angela would have also done it, sure. Yeah, literally, lit literally any other sequence there. That was, a good, that was a good example of playing around a card I couldn't beat and then losing and then losing to other things because I tried to play around a card we weren't beating anyways. Tinny Toast! Thanks for the brand new tier one. Appreciate that. Should have played Angela to chat on her sandwich, what Shadow King does. Well, if I just wouldn't have played. I am ego, and this is my domain. Oh, yeah, I should have, should have just played like Killmonger wasn't real. I'm gonna run an ad break. I'll catch you in two minutes. You ever you ever met someone as unfucking lucky as I am, Chet? Have you ever have you ever seen it in the history of your life? Just like to not, not only hit every one drop, but then also hit every one drop and lose the one in three on every fucking one of them. Just act actually just not, not even real life. Because then all, it also, it also could have chosen to play Elsa instead of two of those cards. It could have chosen to play Elsa instead. All right, I'm gonna change decks. I'm tired of losing with this one. It's been a shit morning for variance with it. What's going on, singular tree? I found a cure for all my advert problems. That'll do it. Thanks for the quarter of a year. Vineyard Dog, thanks for sticking out with the tier one. We do, we do need some mojo boosties. I think Nico is probably good in here. I think if I play Nico, I probably want Black Widow in here though too. Because Widow is another card we like turning into a demon or sacking to draw to. Is it Mojo out? I know I need Mojo boosters, but I think it might actually be Mojo out. Or Mojo Jojo. We need spider web boosters too. Finally got the gold on her. Looks good behind her webbing. No, more like no Jojo, Jojo. You know what I mean?
All right, so this person is like a thousand percent playing Goliath, right? Uh, snap them, because I have Green Goblin for the, 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 what's it called? The donation link under the YouTube video doesn't work. Oh, holy crap, that's an old one. And I'll make a, I'll make a note to update that. Oh, I also forgot to update it on this page. Yeah, that's an old, that's an old, uh, Streamlabs link. Fuck those guys, we don't use them anymore. Chad, if you're a content creator, make sure you use Stream Elements and not Streamlabs. Streamlabs, Streamlabs is very shitty and has done a number of shitty things to the community. Do not, do not give them a cut of any of your shit. Thought for them a long time ago. I also think Stream Elements makes a better product, but even if the products, but even if the, the products were one-to-one -one feature for feature, Streamlabs is a much worse company than Stream Elements. Normal corporate greed or worse? Ah! Probably not too far off a normal corporate greed. Oh man, am I Nico going to draw cards? Almost assuredly. I guess Mindscape's bad for us though. Maybe we're saving Nico to get rid of Mindscape. I would love to pull Maria Hill into the Avengers compound. Oh, snap. And I'll snap you while I do it. There's uh, exactly what we wanted. We, uh, we get to go ahead and uh, get rid of Mindscape here. Your first Nico deck of the morning. No, we've been live for over an hour, almost an hour and a half. We played a little bit of more bounce to start, so I get a highlight of that for tomorrow. The bounce deck has very good stats over the course of the last last day. On untapped. Last I checked, I had like a 56% win rate post infinite. Mm, them drawing Jeff here after waiting it out. At least, they, at least they fucked up their Elsa ordering, I guess. Clear for takeoff. Curry's lab is a weird color. <laughs> it's got like a purple, purplish, pinkish haze over it for some reason. Do 
You think Phoenix with Taskmaster is better than the Nimrod version? Well, I don't know what Nimrod version you're talking about, because all the builds I've played have Taskmaster. Wait, they're also just playing Dr. Octopus? Oh, it's an Agent Coulson card. Well, that's super unfortunate. I think we're dead here, unfortunately. I don't think 20, 20 beats them in Shuri's lab with an Elsa bonus primed. Viper? Rip. She is, gamers. Everybody's favorite card. Snap. That's fine. My green goblin never goes left here, so this is perfect. Dr. Octopus is fine without Ghost Spider or Mojo, yeah? any reason to play my demon out proactively I could draw Titania on the last turn I want to play her I don't think there's any reason for me to I don't think there's any reason for me to make a play here and take priority, right? Cuz even even if they alliance Sinister London, I uh even if they alliance Sinister London, I uh I still win. Blue Marvel. No, we're crushing Blue Marvel. They can move Jeff. What does moving Jeff do? 
They have an eight power Jeff on the right. They're still losing right and center. Yeah, I like Spider Woman. <sighs> yeah, touch, touch about a Luca Cage in the format, but. Does Doc Ock turn five also secure? And I couldn't Doc Ock on the right turn five, VM, because there was an Avengers compound. Otherwise, yes, I would have Doc Ocked into their one open space. YouTube stream did break 80 people this morning. Look at that. And 55 of them found the like button. What gamers? I wonder if you're supposed to like auto snap on Nico drawing cards. Drawing two cards is so strong in this game. Hood or Black Widow are two best draws here, obviously. Yeah, by a lot. Snapping Dark Dimension, really? After I drew two extra cards? Do I want to contest the center? They could be Cerebro too, yeah, as a good take. Yeah, I think I kind of want a Green Goblin left. Unfortunate. Yeah, we're dead. We're dead to three rows. Just have to leave. Escaped. I don't have any space to donate them to Tanya. So I'm not. Streaming on YouTube on the Hoglandia Snap channel, Yamp. I have a secondary channel that I had previously been posting my live streams to after the fact, youtube.com slash Chef Hoagland. So that's where the daily Snap live streams will be on the YouTube side. YouTube is an atrocious hot dog water platform, and if I live stream on the Hoglandia Snap channel, all of the edited content I post will perform worse because YouTube punishes you for posting too much content because it's a great platform. Do 
I want a bad forge just to play on curve? Oh, good forge, technically. Maybe? It's probably fine. is uh debris into Doc Ock, right? If they're a build playing Killmonger, we could be in trouble, but otherwise I like our odds here. They could be snapping back at having a Killmonger though. Maybe I'm supposed to assume they're filling Angela and debris middle. That's probably a good line. Just assume there. They're gonna fill Angela and then get an extra rock over here on them. I didn't really wanna compete for points in this path, but getting an extra rock on their board would've had value. All right, dodge a Shang-Chi, we can dodge a ball here. Oh my god, that's hilarious. They were they were in fact snapping the killmonger. I was hoping to draw a spider woman. But this is fine, I guess. <clears throat> What was that skip? They only had one card in their hand because I Doc ock them. So they were skipping because they could play whatever they drew plus another card on the last turn. They play three cards over here. Bishop goes to nine. That doesn't matter though, right? Because they're losing seven and I'm gaining 12. I'm gaining 14. They also don't have three cards, but the bishop gaining power doesn't matter here. I'm way over the top of what they have. The Titania coming back is a 14 point swing. No Carnage in this deck. Uh, yeah, I don't think you need Carnage, especially with the addition of Nico. Like Nico gives us a second way to get rid of Hood. So I think I think two ways to get rid of Hood is plenty on average. Would Polaris pull something before or after Tanya flips back? Before. Tanya flips back after all the on reveals have finished resolving for your card.
Okay, they played a forge. It's a tough one to compete with. I think I'm just vibing. I think I'm just doing this. Luke Cage makes Spider Woman a bit worse, which is unfortunate. Card. Running into uh, running into a second killmonger neck in a row is probably a sign that I'm gonna switch to something else. Not really interested in playing a bunch of matchups where we're very low percentage points. This deck, uh, this deck is very good, but it's just like super polarized into. I think any week you could open spotlight caches to get more than one series five card is a good use of your resources, statistically speaking. All right, we'll try. If we hit third Killmonger deck in a row, we'll, we'll bounce to something else. Opener for us, Nico. Nico draw two. Subterranean muddles it a little bit, but <clears throat> still very strong here. Yeah, I was explicitly waiting for my Black Widow because I didn't want to give them energy off the altar. All right, I'm going to have to win left and right now because they have a Jeff. They we were they didn't have the Jeff, we were gonna get to be cheeky and play Spider Woman into Yeah, they have a carnage. Alright, I'm done. With this deck. Escaped. Playing a deck with polarized I need a deck with more balanced matchups this morning. It's been a kind of a frustrating morning, and I need a more even gameplay experience to not tilt off the face of the earth. I like how you asked a question, someone pointed out that there is a video that answered your question, and then you came and said sometimes it falls off by the time those videos post. Chat, the video posted less than two hours ago. Come on. 
Come on, gamers. I'm gonna... I gonna actually... In an, in an effort to not tilt off the face of the planet, I'm gonna... I'm gonna turn off uh, sub-only messages for the rest of the day. I'm sure that's gonna cause some people to leave, and that's fine, but... I need to... I need to filter my chat experience, because chat is... Chat is on one this morning. All right, let's take a look at Nico Dex on Untapped and see if anything jumps out at us. Otherwise, we'll cook ourselves. For the entire year, Hutchins. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. We play a lot of Black Widow. I do play a lot of Widow. Okay, so one of the things that's nice about Untapped is we can filter out all of the cards that are in the obvious. We just stuck Nico into good decks. And established decks. All right, Nico without Thanos, Null, Loki, Beast, or Phoenix Force. got her in the Odin ramp deck. This deck does want cheap things and popping an iron heart or a magic is like fine in movers. Yeah, she's just like a generically good wonder, but I don't know that she's lovely in this deck. You don't get a ton of value off the draw here. She is just a move enabler that also can like filter some of your draws or like buff your human torch before you move him. I could buy, I could buy, I could buy this for a dollar. Do I do like terrible move decks. It does, it does have 29.99. There, yeah, look at all these sample sizes are tiny chat. We're scraping, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel for ideas here. Yeah, some clutter variations like what we were playing. This build playing its own copy of armor is interesting. That's true. I did say I wanted a good deck, but I also can't help myself, Chet. All right, I'm going to grab the Terrible Movers deck, but then we might also just brew a little bit here, too. Think there's any obvious changes here? Oh, maybe I want maybe I want Iron Fist to this deck. Iron Fist is probably pretty good this deck, right? Maybe not. Dagger sucks versus Shag. I mean, if they're shagging by two drop, that sounds fine. Iron Fist is probably better than Doctor Strange, huh? Well, I guess he helps you build up your Human Torch. You want it over Hulkbuster? Human, Human Torch is pretty, pretty mid without Hulkbuster. Right? 
Ah, Shag's probably half the reason this deck is, is playable. Well, we'll play a few games with this as is, and we'll let it go. I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build something first, though. <laughs> Alright, what are my other Marvel Snap cards here? My, what are my other Marvel staff cards here? I'm gonna play like a Mysterio. You wanna be a Sentry? I don't know that I wanna be a Sentry. I don't know that I wanna play Hawk. Like, those are, those are questions, right? The, the problem with playing Hawk is as soon as I play Hawk, I'm like, okay, now it's probably a beast deck and now I'm just a shit bounce deck. Like, can I, can I realistically play Hawk without just being a worse version of the Hawk bounce deck? Gamers, it's about that time. I'm gonna do a two minute ad break. You're not going to miss any gameplay. I'm going to be noodling in the deck editor for a minute. Catch you on the flip side. We'll be playing with something like this in a minute. Man Thing is not a good card, yet. Not generically. I don't I don't know that I want to play Luke Cage and Rogue. The problem with Man Thing is that Man Thing, Man Thing takes three slots in your deck. Is the, is the primary, primary problem. Why would uh, Death Strike be good with Nico? Help me, help me understand. I am relatively confident that any Thanos deck I build will be a worse version of the established Thanos prison deck. And I don't like just building bad versions of other things to play. That's kind of a spicy thought. What if I do, what if I do this? These are, these are a bunch of cards that work together, right? We've got, uh, we've got a little bit of a clog sub theme. We've got, Carnage, Nova and Friends, Bucky, Hood, Mysterio, and Debris all get ups from Patriot. Are we putting enough big numbers into play? I think we've got a couple of things that make like fine mid-sized numbers. I've got Shang-Chi to chop anything exceptionally big. Is Nova good here? Is Nova better as something else? I guess I have, I have a lot of bodies. Nova's probably fine, right? Nova's other card, I don't mind blowing up to Nico. What if we played Phoenix Force as a value card? Uh, I don't think that's really true. It's really gonna be much value, right? Like most of the stuff we're blowing up is quite bad. Yeah, I think I, I think I like the idea of Novo. You could sub something like Blue Marvel for Nova. Yeah, I could see that. I don't think I want to play Killmonger in my deck that's trying to power up my rock schemers. Killmonger, Killmonger debris is like big anti-synergy. Well, 
What ongoing effects do I care about that I could be remotely interested in playing? Right? Okay, help me understand. You didn't answer my question, Lumi Pop. Like, when I say, what problem do I have that you're solving with Rogue, don't just tell me decks that play ongoing cards. Tell me specific problems that you think I need to address out of those decks with my deck. That's, the, that's, what, I, that's what I'm looking for when I, when I ask a question like that. Hazmat is not a playable Marvel staff card. Under normal conditions, it's definitely not a playable Marvel staff card when Luke is the second most played tech card in the game. All right, we queued into the one person still playing Cosmo. Rip. Looks like probably a low collection level player. Maybe has a Patriot. Or just Kazar. Cosmo's a good card to be playing if you're a low collection level. I think it's this, right? It's a shame this isn't Carnage. Because then I could like Demon in this, but I think, I think it's this. I actually can't debris really because uh because theirs are bigger than mine. Yeah, we can debris bed. It's this. They're an Ultron gamer. Rip. I think we win mid though, right? Is my swing enough to win the right now though? Nah, I think we lose, right? Always a shitter, chat. To be fair, they probably don't get... To be fair, they probably don't get many wins. Is the thumbs up rude after you win the game? Yeah, it's honestly rude after you lose the game a lot of the time too. Put one in the middle. Actually, she could hold the Nova bonus, or uh, get eaten by Carnage later. This Pegasus is not great for our deck, obviously.
That's a nice one. Do I want to play this out? Ah, I think we have time. You see how the destruction draw spell interacts with Mysterio? My assumption would be the destruction draw spell kills the left Mysterio, regardless of where the real one is. Our, uh, our Patriot, if we can draw it, might, might sneak out a W here. Just naturally Carnage Patriot, our bottom two cards. The way this day's been going, Viper's gonna give them Nico. And then we'll draw Carnage. <laughs> it's certainly been a day. I fist bump, win or lose, it's always meant as good game. Well, the, part of the problem with fist bumping when you win and always intending it to be good game is that games like Marvel Snap that have a lot of inherent variance by design, there's a lot of games that are just objectively speaking not good, right? Like games where one player takes no meaningful game actions and leaves. Well, it's not quite like Magic the Gathering levels of not great, like, there's a lot of similarities there, right? Impromptu dancing. Thank you for the primer. Appreciate the support. Oh, they're El saying is why they played left. That makes sense. debris middle and put a rocket into the angel lane i was taking my play under the assumption that they were going to fill their angela lane jeremy because they wanted to make angela bigger yeah unfortunately none of these smaller decks feel like they are remotely competitive into these elsa decks It, it, it genuinely feels like my opponent and I are playing different games. The numbers, the numbers that they are putting into play are just... Yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't feel... Doesn't feel competitive. I don't know, maybe... Maybe this gets it. Zero Worlds. This is four, eight over here up to 12. 
velocity for a cube, I guess. Maybe we get lucky. the tiebreaker. Can we try Nico to Devil Dino build. The problem with Devil Dino is that I think all the Devil Dino decks are just bad versions of Loki. I don't, I don't I don't think a competitive Devil Dino deck exists outside of the Thanos deck playing Devil Dino. It's like the TLDR. All right, let's play this in Conquest a little bit because Conquest is less competitive than the latter. So our bad deck has more of a shot there. Love the YouTube short I published. When did I publish a YouTube short? Like weeks ago. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna be doing any more YouTube shorts. The couple we published had awful stats. Not worth the investment. I'm a pro. Thanks for the brand new prime. Appreciate it. We should try Moon Girl Nico. That's a good shout. We'll fart around with this for a little bit and then we'll do that. Uh, anything but Mysterio is a fine pull for Sakar here. It's been a day, chat. Of all, of all the days that I have had recently, today is certainly one of them. And then Mysterio would have even been excellent to hit with Wakanda Embassy to boot. Uh, Nico and Moon Girl should continue to rotate. And my understanding would be uh, your two Nikos should have different spells in hand afterwards would be my expe expectation. Uh, Nico spells rotate in a random order, but they do not repeat. So the longer she's in your hand, the more predictable which her next spell will be, becomes. AC, thanks for the prime. Well, the bite meant that they couldn't uh, couldn't kill the X-23 at least. We lost the one and three on the Wolverine. Not that we expect to hit it with the way today is going. What if we go Nico into Bucky into Nova? And then we'll be able to Deathlock here for a good value. won the right honestly maybe i'm supposed to play the second bucky middle with the assumption that i need to draw carnage to win the game might actually be a good take yeah yeah i think i messed up i think i'm supposed to play the second bucky middle because they're just not going to compete for the oscorp tower now is our opponent dc'd they skipped last turn oh weird
Yeah, I should have I should have played to this draw. Is it out? Victory. What's going on, Tav? Thanks for the brand new primer. Appreciate the support. There are two subaroos off of 3,200 concurrent subscribers. It's a happy, happy note on a variance filled morning. Have gone much worse. Could have could have gone much worse. Does Armor Rakanda stop Nico's destroy draw. Yes. Thank you for the almost four years. Welcome back. Good morning. Good morning. I could do this. <coughs> Saint Lovejoy with the five gifted subs. That's incredibly generous of you. Good morning, good morning. Thanks for putting us solidly up over 3,200 concurrents. I we just vibe. I don't want to play my demon into a killwalker. Yeah. Enough said, All right, Wolverine went somewhere not left. So that's good for us. play my Viper Debris deck against the Destroy deck. <sighs> Maybe there's just too much Destroy for us to play, play this idea. It's probably the case. I think I'm gonna shelve the Clutter ideas. Maybe, maybe we could still do Viper stuff, but... Uh, debris angle has felt real bad this morning. I mean, I saw Harry playing Cerebro 2 this morning too. And just, just so like people understand the silent acknowledgement among content creators chat. If you see any content creator, myself included, who's ranked in the top 1000 or so, and you see us playing a deck inside of Conquest, the underlying message there is the deck we're playing is probably fucking terrible. <laughs> if, we, if we're if we playing a deck and we think it's actually good, we'll play we'll play it on the ladder. So yeah, I saw I saw Harry working on Cerebro too. And we'll probably play it at some point as well, but it's definitely not good. Alright, I wanted to do uh, Moon Girl Nico stuff, right? The ladder feels so stressful, but it's, like, it's not even just about stress, it's just that the ladder's super sweaty, and there's a bunch of people. Like, the deck, the deck diversity is very, very different on the ladder versus Conquest.
Serenico. Yeah, I can play Serenico. It's probably fine. Uh, Moon Girl stuff is probably a Chavez deck. What else do I want to double up? Oh, you know, we could just do... We played Deadpool. We played Deadpool. Um, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go net deck. Hold on. I'm looking. I'm gonna go look for past Jeff Deadpool Moon Girl. Time to retire the clutter control deck, chat. That's uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna save future Jeff from some pain here after looking at that one. Who wants to go? Did I do this more recently in Conquest? <laughs> one month ago. And if I recall, past Jeff had some uncertainty about whether or not he liked X-23 in this deck. So she's probably an easy swap. Is Collector good enough here? Probably isn't. I feel like I want one more, at least one more card that I'm happy to like blow up. I think this deck was pre collector nerf too. A month ago, I forget exactly what that timeline looks like. If we, what if we Bucky? If I do, what if I do this? I don't know that I have room for Wasp. Do I want Elsa? Maybe? She's so much fun, Super Tech. Yeah, maybe we don't need Kitty. I could put Killmonger back in if I cut Kitty, right? It's a fine tech card at the moment. Now do we want X-23? That's a good question. X-23 or Bast. I think Bast is pretty imp I think you need... I think you need two ways to get Deadpool rolling. <laughs> starting starting Deadpool from nothing is... Is not ideal. Forge and Nico are two ways. I think you're kind of kidding yourself if you're counting Nico as a way to make Deadpool bigger. Deadpool, Nico's like half a way to make Deadpool bigger, if that. Let's start, let's start here. We'll, we'll go from there. You need Deathlock if you're on Killmonger. You're rarely sad to have extra ways to blow stuff up in a destroy deck. Are 
hope you like your video since you hired the editor. Thanks, Max. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with the... Uh, really happy with the uh, amount it feels like the quality has increased on my, my channel since we ended the editor. I get also an amusing commentary on how YouTube <coughs> algorithm and metrics don't really reward higher quality content. That like metrics are right about the same since uh, I added an editor, but that's a rant for a different day. The sand is very good. All right, deck your finest moon girl, please. Mysterio, someone said Mysterio could be an okay card here. It works well with Bast and Nico. Yeah, I could I could see that being good. Mysterio is also <sighs> Mysterio is also uh pretty reasonable with uh with Moon Girl as a as a duplicate. Oh, I didn't realize you were back on uh D4 with the new season, Betty. Uh, I don't really care for the current spotlight cash, Nico. I like the midnight. I like, I actually like almost every other one of her. Every other one of her variants. And the Thanos control decks have got to be eating good right now, huh? Just all, all destroy matchups. Hey, Jumook. Thanks for the primer. Appreciate it. See how Moon Girl Nico behaves. Can the can the copy Nico have different spells? Can, can the copy Nico re-rotate through spells that the other one had already done? Is a question. Hey, serious? Thank you for the 20 months. Welcome back. I think the answer is yes, right? We had the move. We had the move on this Nico earlier. So I knew they were going to have different spells. I just wasn't sure if the copy remembered which ones this one had already rotated through. It looks like the answer to that is no. Guard plus two power. Going for infinite for the first time. Any tips for the grind for Galactus onward? Yeah, just play a lot. Volume. Volume is the most important thing. 
If you're capable if you're capable of getting to rank 80, you're capable of getting to rank 100. You just have to play enough. Uh, our hand kind of didn't do anything, huh? They have priority, which means this Killmonger could maybe do stuff. Yeah, we have to catch their Deadpool. S will stay for one. Oh, this is only tying here though, right? I should I needed to put more stats here. Oh, never mind. We have the we have the Nico bonus. Okay, okay. I knew that. I knew that. That was a test. Oh, we should kill Mogger in case they deadpool mid. Yeah, baby. Wait on Forge, I probably want a Bucky on. On two, and I don't want to Forge my Bucky. Snap isn't hard by any means. I don't know if that's fair to say that. The majority of people that play Snap don't hit infinite. I think passing it off is something easy isn't necessarily accurate. So if I do this, I'm basically saying I'm going to plan to win the game with Deathlock, Stevens, and Killmongers, which might, might be a realistic plan. Three, jumping into the path that they get to Venom is, uh... Sorry, this is I don't know, 10, 14, 37. The X-23 goes somewhere else. We're beating the Venom. We're beating a Null if the X-23 goes anywhere other than left. So we'll definitely stay for one. We could have a copy of Death, though, in which case we're just got... I think this match was probably pretty hard for our deck. We're like a little destroy deck that doesn't have Death or Null. All right, 
66% to win the game. Nailed it. We're like scrapping this out two cubes at a time because like, I don't know, maybe I should be taking more risks in these 50-50 situations just because the matchup is bad. I'm gonna not forge on one because if we draw Bucky or Nico with some spells, I'm gonna wanna wait like this. This is actually, actually the Stone Cold Perfects. I want to turn my forge into two cards. Yes, please. We had two draws there that rewarded waiting on Forge. That was one of them. I'd like to draw Carnage here in a perfect world. This Twitch stream is pre-recorded in front of a live audience. Thanks everybody for hanging out today. Appreciate you being here. Dream Dimension is uh, is kind of whatever. Listen, chat, it's easy to draw the fucking perfects when you draw two extra cards on turn two, okay? The deck, the deck is stacked in your favor because you drew lots of it. Okay, I think... If this was a Dream Dimension, I would kill Deadpool this turn. But because this is Dream Dimension, I'm just going to play all of these out and then we'll play one of these next turn. Didn't Glenn even say drawing cards was the best mechanic in this game? It's the best mechanic in every game, is that what she said? Drawing Moon Girl is actually the one really big punish for not putting a 12 power Deadpool in my hand last turn, which is sad. Although I guess I wouldn't have been able to empty my hand enough to play it out anyway, so. Uh, Venom is bigger than Deathlock here. Yeah, even with a uh, little bit of indigestion. I have to play for every path because of Null, which does mean we lose to death. Oh, it was their turn to not have priority with Killmonger. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. Wait, what? <laughs> Reverend Nobs. Thank you for the quarter of a year in advance. I plan to be here, Snapple Appin. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, Nico hits the copy of card next turn and we get extra cartridge back to her hand would be sick.
Okay, so this is just Carnage into Forge, and then next turn we Bucky into Killmonger, right? How's Moon Girl felt so far? So far, we've just been like a little destroyed deck. We haven't really gotten to Moon Girl much profitably. I just want you to know, chat, it physically hurts not to draw cards with Nico, but I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Because we have the, we have the Forge trigger pending here. Alright, ideally their X-23 goes not right. Rangers, thank you for the five gifted subs. That's super generous. Good morning. That is Nico's move spell, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, can I play around having priority here? I don't think so. end up not having priority. That's perfect. There's a good chance they got us here. They could just have a null though, and then we're good. Oh gosh. That's a weak, weak last turn. For what it's worth, chat, when I when I put po I posted a classic destroy highlight on the YouTube channel, I think it was Monday, and I had a lot of people ask about Lady Deathstrike in the comments. Um, the stats on the builds with Lady Deathstrike and Destroy are, uh, last I checked worse than the builds without. Let's check that that's still the case here. Look at the popular builds. These are like 0.27... 53% at the top. 0.19. Ooh, it's actually edged up over it a little bit. So still lower than these builds without. Nico, Nico build. Getting a couple of points here. Nico copying death on occasion is probably sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I've been, I've personally been well by her stats. Actually, the stats on this actually aren't meaningfully different. As the sample size has increased, it's normalized quite a bit. It's probably, it's probably fine. I personally don't like it, but the stats show it's probably about, about the same. Changing, changing one card is mostly whatever. All right, gamers, it's about that time. We're gonna take a quick two-minute ad break. We're gonna see if we can queue up into something that's not a destroy beer. Narrator, he could not. Get you at 120 seconds. How's our, how's our Nico highlight doing on the YouTube side this morning? Metrics say. Hey, it's got solid metrics this morning. Love to see it. 
Good time to Arbor and Godfogan. Yeah, probably. How's the YouTube stream after a couple of days? Um, so one of the things that's interesting, and again, I like, I really don't know what, like, streaming on YouTube, dual stream has reinforced why YouTube is not really a successful streaming platform. So like, one of the things that I've noticed that's kind of interesting. So like, if you look at my raw stream uploads, these were before I was live streaming here. On my archive channel, the stream uploads would get between like probably about 2,500 views on average on here. So like not a, not a lot, but like not terrible. And streaming them live actually seems to have hurt the number of views they get after the fact. So I'm, I'm going to do this full week live streamed on the YouTube side, but... I think there's a chance that it just doesn't make sense for me to dual stream at all based on what the metrics look like because these live streams with about the same number of views, these count views from while the stream was live. These each had about a thousand views from the actual during the day live. So they actually are both underperforming by a significant a significant margin. So I'm going to do the full week on here and see what it looks like after the week. But the streaming as opposed to just uploading the stream after I streamed it on Twitch is actually hurting the view count after the fact. Yeah, I think I think that's probably part of it, Boba. I think Twitch probably realized or come to, came to similar conclusions I'm coming to with my shower just like it just doesn't make sense to stream on YouTube <laughs> actually and that's and so it's it's really a testament to how weird and and bad YouTube stuff is right that like putting out more stuff on their platform just like hurts it why are some videos limited monetization uh YouTube and that's I guess we'll we'll get this one limited monetized now moving moving forward um whenever i talk about anything remotely political youtube limits the monetization on those videos which those videos don't make that much money anyways like that entire that entire secondary channel it makes like four hundred dollars in ad revenue on a good month so like it's not like it really hurts me. Like, I think I think a limited monetized video on there makes like fifteen dollars as opposed to like twenty five or thirty dollars. Nah, I've tested a few different things, Martian. It is consistently talking about political topics that gets them restricted in monetization. Because even, even all the ones, like, I swear pretty casually in basically all of my streams. That is, that is not what's, what's doing it. Maybe I shouldn't have forged on one. It's probably a good take. Yes, it, liter it literally cost me money to talk about politics occasionally on stream. That's fine. I'm not going to stop doing it. Like I said, that channel is whatever. Not, not super concerned about it. I think we're doing this, so then we're venoming here. 
And if we're really lucky, Nico will give us the double, double your card card next turn. Nico. This is great, says local man about to get Professor X. Was that a Colson Dino? It was a Colson Dino. What a what a beat. some non-destroy decks for a little bit. It's ba we basically just played destroy mirrors and people with counters today. So, I think I, I, I want to not blow my stuff up. Tactical Rangers. Thanks for the tier one. Appreciate that. Loopy Liddy. Thank you for sticking on for the 11th month. Breaking news, local man, in fact, gets Cosmo to not Professor X. That's true. That's true. Somehow, somehow it was worse than I imagined. We could, we could play, we could play some good decks for a little bit. Nico, Nico does just slot well into, into the good decks. I could also try Viper stuff without being full destroy. Let's do Viper stuff without being full, full destroy for a little bit. We'll do that at least. Oh, we could do Sarah. Yeah, Sarah is pretty close to. We'll get we'll get to Sarah Duck, but Sarah Sarah is also just an Elsa deck, right? That'll be a shove a good deck. I want something else that Nico wants to eat. I don't I don't think I want to be a sentry deck. Because sentry is just not good into the destroy stuff. Destroy is super popular. How old are my kids when I started teaching these in Pokemon TCG? I'm gonna be honest. My eight and nine-year-olds still don't fully grasp all the ins and outs mechanically of Pokemon TCG. Pokemon, Pokemon TCG might be the most mechanically complex card game out there. It's really, there's a lot going on. It's very busy. The cards. The cards have lots of words, and so there's lots of shuffling. But po Pokemon is legitimately not a good game for small kids. <laughs> it's a, it's a solid game, but it's it's tough for the little ones to play fully fully decks. If you're just playing like casually with like starter decks, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. They've been they've been like half playing since they were like six and seven. So it's been a few years. Pokemon is way more complicated than Magic the Gathering, and it's not close. The average the average game of Pokemon TCG is comparable to playing the most complicated decks Magic the Gathering has to offer. How am I winning the game? So like I don't that's a I have I have these. And then it's just like it's so hard not to just be Elsa Mush from here, right? Like it feels, it feels like you're like, Jeff, I'm filling in, I'm filling in the rest of this. What is it? 
as complex as Four Horsemen. Yeah, yeah, like basically the average deck in Magic the Gathering is like playing, or, or in Pokemon TCG is like playing Vintage Storm in Magic the Gathering. Every, every deck is full of wheels and tutors. It's got a lot going on. Every, every, every competitive Pokemon deck is full of wheels and tutors if you have a Magic background. Yeah, it's just, and this is, this is part of the, and I honestly, I don't know that I expect them to adjust this in the OTA, but it's just like all the numbers in this pack, this package is so parasitic, right? You're like, okay, I kind of want to play Jeff because he's a good card. And if I have Jeff, well, Angela's good and then Elsa's good. And it's all, it's all very very samey, right? And then I've just got the same the same core. I don't know that I necessarily need Craven. Yeah, and if these if these are good, then Kitty is good. Yeah, the Elsa the Elsa package just has so many cards in it. What if we, what's something different we can do? What if we like storm people and we accept that we're bad to the Elsa movers deck, but we're good into other things? Like storm, storm armor is probably legitimately good against destroy, right? Cause you like storm one path and armor another, and then you super restrict what they can do. Although if I'm an armor deck, I probably don't want to be a Shang-Chi deck, huh? I just don't really want to play another destroy deck, Grindel. With like for the last two hours, we've only played like destroy mirrors and decks looking to counter destroy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I love man thing in general. You know, my votes for some... Well, the, the problem with Shield Pile is Shield Pile is just bad Loki. And then once you're in Loki, you're like, all right, now I'm Elsa and everything else. All right, how am I how am I winning a Storm Path? Magento? Magento wins me Storm Path. Can I try and tune up old Magento control? Mobius is good. Jeff could be okay. I don't know that we're going full Kingpin. Jones could legitimately be fine. I like Jones. Yeah, I never really think Jones is better than Drax. I think I need, uh, I think I need something else that Nico can destroy or turn into a demon for profit. Latro Deck Des, thank you for the 19 months. Gamora to Tanya. Gamora could be okay. They're gonna be restricted where they can play a little bit. But like a forge or a snow guard. Snow guard's awkward because she interacts with storm not profitably. So like spider hammer ice man. I don't I don't hate that. Just like a generically good one or two. Can I play Black Widow without playing Dark Hawk? Is that allowed? Do I go to jail for that? To straight to jail and then obviously one of the last two cards we should play should be done in the most scientific way possible and i'm gonna look for some other gold back cards that kind of make sense because we're almost there
you know, honestly, someone said wave and I kind of don't hate it. What is Mobius's play rate down to? Can we just be like a total shitter and Mobius wave people? That, that might be, that might be the answer. I think, I think it's time for a villain arc, Chet. The time for a villain arc? Sub 30%? Oh, my sweet summer children. The is it time to teach some gamers some lessons? Is that is that where we're at? Is there a gold-backed one, too? When in doubt, be a shitter. <laughs> we could play Spooderman. We could play Rescue. We could play Iceman as another cheap Nico card. Nebula or Sunspot could be okay. Do you want Doctor? I think Doctor Doom just kind of. Has it aged well? Maybe the doom is good. It's fine. Or cheap cards is probably good. I don't want to like have Nico be able to draw cards and like not have something to tee up with her. going on Prague thank you for the prime appreciate it here so we'll happily just like viper into the bar Here, chat. <sighs> Wind aid my hand. Never seen a deck this busted in your life before, chat. They saw our all gold cards and they're tapping out. 100% win rate. Broke it.
A Prague. Glad you're having fun with it. Thanks for thanks for being here and helping support what I do. Twitch is my full-time gig, and your prime subs are a big part of why that's possible. Nico and Bounce is awesome. Tomorrow morning's deck highlight will definitely be a bounce deck. Don't tell YouTube. I'm the YouTube thumbnail is going to be something like Nico puts my favorite deck into overdrive. It's not going to have a Falcon or a Beast anywhere remotely close to the thumbnail. <clears throat> They're snapping me? I was thinking about snapping them, Jet. Time to game, gamers. I'm going to Nico copy my hood. I think is my plan. Or we're going to draw armor and I'm going to copy my armor. Rats, never lucky. Yeah, the symbols memorized already. To be fair, the symbols are like pretty intuitive. I think they, I think they did an excellent job with the symbols. is perfect. We've got Brittany teed up here. Turn five, even without the Mobius, turn five wave is legitimately good against these decks, right? And then because they don't have Mobius, I get to go Magento, Demon, Demon. The, this is the control deck. She told you not to worry about yet. Are we the baddies? Chat, when has anybody evil ever flaunted their immense wealth by playing almost entirely gold-backed cards. Everybody knows all the billionaires are ethical. One of our three one drops is Sag into turn one Abby.
We have a second play. That's good for us. How many splits does it take to get a card gold like these? Starting on your fifth split, you have a 10% chance to get a gold back card. Posted, I posted this the other day. Uh, what, was my, what was my stats? I have 43 unique gold splits in my collection at this point. So, some of you might think I'm snapping on turn one because I have Hood Viper, and you're not wrong, but I'm also snapping on turn one because I have Iceman, who is incredibly good in the Shuri matchup. Ooh, super flow offsets that. Uh, I'm I'm keeping an eye on the chat on the YouTube side to make sure people aren't uh you know, being, being turns. I am, I am of the firm opinion that if you create a space online for people to communicate, you should be responsible for moderate, moderating it. Try and pull Sauron over to the left, right? To the left, to the left. Dinosaur man's gonna slide to the left in the sewer system. He will touch. No, I, got, I lost it at the end there, chat. We're doing very well right up until we flub the finish. Did they forget my Jeff could move? They must have forgotten my Jeff could move, right? Because if I move Jeff, we're still winning here. And then if they play anything, Titania jumps over, which is sick. I guess they probably also just weren't expecting, you know, Magento to mess him up like that. Someone asked why we're playing Jessica Jones, because she's a reasonable follow-up to Storm when you're in Series 1 and Series 2. I just, I just want to relive my glory days, chat.
Yes, Nico into Widow is part of why we have, uh... Part of why we have, uh... What's it called in the deck? Black Widow. I think I'm gonna get rid of Los Diablos base here because I want to keep Titan for Mag for Magneto here, and they don't really have any sixes, so Titan is like one-sided positive for us. Unfortunate that I have to burn an armor here. Okay, so I think we do this, and we step them. Because I'll be able to Magneto and Hood next turn, and they'll get to play one card. They're taskmastering me, right? Is what the snap is. That'll put them to 13 in the middle. This beats Taskmaster, man. Does it lose the Taskmaster, right? This is a Taskmaster, right? Right? Does this beat Taskmaster, right? It pulls this out. They go to 24 here. I'm at 14, 13, 19, 23. Damn. They'll always do it mid. All right, fine. I don't care. Fucking chat with the soul reads. Got him. Got him. Thanks, chat. Victory. Prayer chat. It's right. For I would like the record to reflect that it is statistically correct to leave here. I just also need to take a two minute ad break before these auto run though. So I was fine with losing this game. So we'll see you in two minutes gamers. We'll be back with more of this deck when we're done. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to run into the bathroom real quick.
Does every card except Nico have a uh, gold border? This it, it does. Yeah. I don't, have, I don't have a Nico variant I like yet. When the clock rolls over at two o'clock, we might buy the Nico Midnight Suns variant. You think at the rate at which you're adding stab cards off to choose the rotation system or something like that? Nah, I don't think so. One card, one card a week is so few cards. My mama didn't raise no cowards, so with only one spotlight cash, I pulled Nico. There you go. There's the true skilled gamer that Brood foretold of. Yeah, not not only is like one card a week keep the trickle going, but like with the OTAs too on the regular, there's plenty of plenty of movement they can generate in the format without needing to rotate things formally. Yeah, yeah, and as a comparison, Magic's smallest format rotates between like 1,200 and 2,000 cards. Actually, it's more than that now, right? Magic standard format rotates every three years now. So like their, their smallest format like gets up to like 3,000 cards or something like that. It's like 12 sets, 12 times 200 or so. It's about 2,400. OTA buffs frequently feel like new card releases. Completely agree. Completely agree. How much of that format is chaff though? Sure. Even if you assume 80% of the cards they release are irrelevant, 80% um, 2400 times 0.8, that's still... Our type's point two. It's still 500 playable cards, right? Which Snap is like infinitely away from. Oh, thanks, Wanda. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think we Snap on that one. Opponent's uh, saving us the trouble. The symbols on this card are so good. Whoever whoever did all of the animations and user stuff on this was so slick. Very, very, very smart design. And that's copy a card, which we might want to do to this Magneto at some point, honestly. Oh, oh, wait, chat. I get to go storm into wave. No, I guess, I guess. Oh, wait, there. You're, wait, you're waving me? Yeah, I think I Magneto left. I think, uh... Super flow is better for most other wave decks than it is for me. Oh. And we hit the Nico draw this turn. That's so perfect. Oh, you think they're Cerebro 3? They might be. It's a good, that's a good take. I'm gonna snap him on the the Nico draw Black Widow here.
and Ah, mistakes, I'm a fish. Timing just worked out so perfect for them. I should have left where they step. <coughs> Escaped. It's funny that they're also a Mobius wave deck. extra Jeff I probably should have snapped them, huh? <laughs> I guess we could lose the double, double three draw, double three power thing on the left there, right? don't have stats. I am. LOL. Alright, we're gonna bounce. There's a node issue with Deco's destroy effect causing DCs. Ah, uh, yeah, it can kick you out of the game. Does it, it, let, it let me get right back in, though. Is it not letting people get back in? you indicate so it'll always let you reconnect okay yeah that was that was my experience with it so far too
Ace card. Of the pairings you've gotten since we switched our to Troy. You know, honestly, uh, I probably should have taken our other decks into Gold Conquest. Gold Conquest is consistently the least competitive of all of the Conquest modes. Because it has the lowest, um, or the least amount of collection level based matchmaking. So you tend, you tend to get a wider spread of what people are playing inside of Gold Conquest compared to Silver and Proving Grounds even. Oh, I know they're a wave gamer. I should be playing my Mobius. That's on. That's on me, Chip. play against Wave Sandman. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to playing the lower levels where the decks are. Where the decks are different. <clears throat> Cook 13. Thanks for the primer. Welcome back. Maybe we unleash our misery on the ladder. Sold. <clears throat> I can't remember the last time I played against a, a wave on the ladder. Do you think Nico slots into like I think Nico probably just goes into every single one of the good decks. <sighs> I think she is generically a very reasonable card. Do we think we can win <coughs> Asgard with Jones? If not, I should just Black Widow them. Probably not. I think especially with the extra energy, they're going to fill the Elsa path. Oh, I missed that they're playing Thanos. <clears throat> I missed I missed that they're playing Thanos. will be good though here right <coughs> we just well <coughs> do I do this
Because even if they Jeff here, we're good to go at that point, yeah? This is 8, 20, 20 to 12 is plus 8. They're plus 7. We're beating anything other than... Beating anything other than... Uh, <clears throat> other than Jeff out of them. And they have 9 cards in their deck, so their odds of having Jeff here are low. How? I'm sorry, I'm just asking how. The chat's suggesting plays that don't work. The left the left was flooded, is the thing chat is almost always missing. As a general note to the comment in chat, Jeff, are you getting sick as I cough and mute myself frequently to clear my nose? Um Asking someone if they're sick, especially through a live stream, is like, it's kind of a negative EV play. Like, if they are sick, you're like reminding them that they're sick and they they're, they sound like, they kind of sound like shit. And if they aren't sick, your question, are you sick, is implying that they sound bad, even when they don't necessarily feel bad. So it's one of those, like, the upside is super minimal. And the downside is like <clears throat> the the upside is like non-existent. It's all it's all negative. If I have three children under the age of ten, it's easier to tell you the times I'm not sick than the times that I am. When I was when I was yeah, it's like telling someone they look tired. Yeah. When I was in my early twenties. I thought I had a good immune system because I was never sick. It turns out I just didn't live with people that sneezed directly into my eyeballs. It had nothing to do with my immune system. Easy Mobius snap on the Elysium, and then we'll be able to storm this next turn before it can do anything. save her for more utility later although it could be right to just play like a 2-5 drawing cards however I would love to draw some cards gamers this is exactly why we slot an ice man into the deck so we just have another cheap thing to convert into a draw to Victory. I just need to stop snapping so we can get actual games to play out. That's the other downside to playing on the ladder. Maybe we'll go back to the proving ground so we can like actually have games play. And not worry about cube management. Oh, 
floor. Both of our opponents were likely correct there to retreat. It's just kind of boring. One of the only good parts about the pandemic, everyone started wearing masks and they haven't gotten a cold or flu since. Fun fact, someone was asking earlier why some of my YouTube streams get limited monetization. Consistently, without fail, every time I point out the fact that masks are good and stop the spread of germs, YouTube limits the monetization on whatever video I said that in. Just a, just a wonderful platform. Becoming a demon is just good flavor, chat. the truffle shuffle here, huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, tech guards, how I've not missed you. Actually, fun fact, I could have, I could have and should have played around that, right? I should have moved wave here and then played armor mid armor armor should have been on the board somewhere i should have either been insulating here or here from uh from shang it's part of the reason armor's in the deck yeah the deadpool phoenix highlight from this morning and then the bounce deck that'll be the highlight tomorrow morning are my two favorite nico decks definitely good in proactive proactive combo style decks i also i also think nico it's just a generically good one energy card that'll slot into basically any Elsa deck and Thanos. So if you're a best deck gamer, you probably just want her as well. She's a lot of utility for her energy cost. When YouTube lowers your monetization for those videos, does it tell you why? No. No, I had to figure out exactly what was triggering the restricted monetization through trial and error. And it's definitely not just due to casual swearing because that happens in every video. That's true. Saying Nico's good in Thanos decks or Elsa decks, then also saying Thanos is redundant at this point. Average Nova deck probably can't get into Sanctum. That's a good first location for us.
Yeah, Wolverine could at this point, is accurate. Crossing my fingers and desperately hoping to find our single singular copy of armor. Possibly playing Zola. This is probably something I point out more than any other, but unless you see Zola in your opponent's destroy deck, especially in Conquest, you shouldn't play around it. On on average, um, destroy decks do not play Zola. I think per untapped stats, it's like one in. Uh, it was like thirty percent. priority here but they also burn their venom so not really sure that that matters uh thanks they want that coin flip whoa well already then Okay, this stops them from doing more than one thing. Gosh, we're so... We're so close to being good enough here. If their stupid X-23 had landed center, we'd win the game. But we lose we lose the tiebreaker to Null, unfortunately. But otherwise, we would have been able to juke them with the Magneto, pulling these into here and then winning here and here. Or they don't have it. Sure. No, Nico, Nico is random. She's random and doesn't repeat. It's confirmed by devs. streams are better long-term for streamers. We we're actually talking about earlier how uh, dual streams are potentially not better long-term for streamers. <clears throat> My, uh... perfect for us. So the dual stream on Saturday on the Hoglandia Night channel had okay numbers, but it ultimately, um, it ultimately hurt the video that I uploaded there on Saturday. And similarly, the live streams the last two days on the Jeff Hoagland YouTube channel, they've had okay numbers and haven't heard anything because I don't post anything else on that channel, but they actually performed worse than me just uploading the Twitch streams after the fact. So I'm going to run it for a week there and see how it, see how it ends up looking later, but definitely, uh, as of, as of right now, based on all the data that I have, it looks like dual streaming on YouTube might actually be detrimental to the content on YouTube and revenue and stuff like that. We're going to we're gonna do it this whole week, and we'll take a look at all the metrics afterwards and see if, that make, if it makes sense to continue doing it or not. Perform worse is in total watch time. Total watch time, total number of views. 
on ever on average the first two days of uh, live streams for Monday and Tuesday that I live streamed on YouTube instead of uploading to YouTube after the fact had about 60% as many views as the uploaded videos would have had. I am and that, is, that is streaming on the archive channel, CT CT Jester. So the archive the archive channel streaming it there rather than streaming to Twitch and then uploading it to the archive channel after the fact. The streams on there get about 60% as much as uploading the Twitch stream later. I only, I only have two data points. We're gonna do we're gonna do the whole week. We'll see how it shakes out. So because you're running this in Conquest, you think this deck is bad. I think uh, the list of decks that are not bad right now are like Elsa decks and Zabu Darkhawk. And maybe, maybe Hella Tribunal. Maybe. Big, big question mark maybe on that one. Oh, JOZ, don't feel ashamed for <coughs> claiming promo subs. Like I, said, like I said, anytime I give you a gift sub as a promo for like one of our sponsored things, it means the sponsored thing was paying me as much or more than you would have paid me for a sub, so. Make it Elsa nerf though. I think if Elsa has the same text box uh, after the OTA tomorrow, it is an incredible miss on second dinner's part. As, some, as someone who, on average, is very, very against nerfing cards too quickly, I think it is painfully obvious that Elsa needs an adjustment at this point. I'm going to snap them because we have priority here, and they just drew two stones, and this Black Widow is going to stop the draws from the stones that they drew. Have they ever nerfed a season pass card during its season? Has a season pass card ever needed a nerf during its season? Someone, someone asked that question yesterday and that was my same response. Not they can't update text boxes via OTA. So Zabu and Silver Surfer OTAs didn't exist. In fact, the very first OTA Marvel Snap literally ever did was fucking Zabu. Yeah, I assume there's a few reasons why the live streams do worse on YouTube than uploaded Twitch stream scopes, but like, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, I don't care why it is. If they underperform, I'll switch back to doing it the other way. Alright, and then old Jeffy boy here gets to jump into the middle and win that, and then Magento probably wins the left for us.
Don't be pedantic. To the gamer that was like, well, you asked one thing and not the other. The implication based on the context of the discussion that we are having was very, very clear. So sorry for not spelling out that I, me liking waffles doesn't mean I hate pancakes, but that's where we're at. Yeah, we were, I was yelling at chat. I should have vipered here. Chats, chats being chat. I should have, I should have, I should have vipered the Savage Lands instead of the armor. Specs are fat lad. I need to uh, figure out how to put the YouTube chat into members only mode so I can remove random harassment from there. Far from the first ban on the YouTube side. Bates, thank you for the prime. I appreciate it. The way the way YouTube works, most people don't know that they're getting banned. YouTube YouTube lets people who are banned continue to post comments, but nobody sees them but themselves. Oh, it's time for ads. I'm gonna tap the add button chat. We'll see you in 120 seconds. I'm gonna play with this deck some more, and then I think we'll probably pivot over to playing some good decks with Nico in a little bit here. There's a there's an OTA coming tomorrow, so I don't really know that I wanna work too hard brewing too much if the OTA is coming and hopefully changing things up. Either either way, this one's been fun. Believe it or not, one of the many things YouTube does not let me do easily is toggle members only chat on. Wonderful. <laughs> what a what a platform. Is Phoenix Force the best Nico deck? Probably not. About zero, zero percent chance that we know what the best Nico deck is. I'd, I'd assume if you're looking for just most powerful deck that happens to play Nico, it's probably just one of the existing best decks at Nico. Yeah, YouTube members are like paid subscriptions, like on, on the Twitch side. Destroy Nico felt pretty good. I mean, that's just like another example of like a good deck that you could shove Nico into, right? Where she like has some synergy. It's like, I don't mean, I don't mean think that like, it's so, it's so hard for me. I, I always feel like it's a cop out when like someone's like, what's the best deck with new card? And it's like, well, you just take 12th worst card from existing best deck and add Nico. It's like, well, yeah, obviously that's the case. I feel like I feel like it should go without saying that those are 
Those are without keys. How many members do you have on YouTube? Uh, I think on this, the archive channel, like one singular, last I checked. I gave, I gave some of this, I gave like to rehash some of, um, to re to rehash some of what I talked about my one year in review video. Um, I made $160,000 last year on Twitch and like over half of that was from subs and prime subs, paid subs and prime subs. And in comparison, on YouTube, I made $73,000 and less than a thousand of it was from was from paid members. So the, the culture is very different between the two platforms when it comes to direct support. So I counted, it looks like your YouTube streams get about as many views post stream as your Twitch videos. That's not true, Les Ruckles, because the view counts on those videos that you're looking at include about a thousand views from when the videos are live, it racks up views. So really the reach about a thousand less. Yeah, I looked at that link token. I know what you're referencing and the, the buttons that they're referencing aren't there. I found, I found the same link you're trying to spell out. Agatha. No, they have the same number of cards in deck as we do, so not Agatha. So the, the thing to note about the YouTube revenue hex and I talked about this in the video too, the one year video, is that um, the majority of the money from what I made on the YouTube side was all made inside of the first few months. Like over, over $20,000 of that 73,000 I made on YouTube last year was just November and December last year when Snap first came out. On, on average, uh, the YouTube channel for like the last four to five months makes about thirty five hundred a month, which isn't nothing, but it's a far cry from what it was at the very start when Snap first released. So I think the plan here is. Magneto, Systems the Thor, and the Jubilee out of the flooded. Call it a day. We'll go to 25 here, and they'll be plus 11 up to 15. Actually, I want to go to 20. I'm going to slide him in the middle. Kind of hedge hedge my bets here in case they Doctor Doom. Well, I guess if they Doctor Doom, we tie here, right? So it's about a wash. I genuinely don't remember if we're playing Silver or Proving Grounds. Is this a bot? Victory. I don't think I've seen this deck in a bot before, but like the all base arts. I don't remember which game mode I'm playing. A uh, drop. There aren't supposed to be bots in Conquest though, unless you wait a while. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, either way, it's not going to be a very interesting or good game. All right, maybe that was silver. Yeah, base base art, unusual cards. And they're supposed to be collection level base matchmaking inside of inside of Proving Grounds and Silver. So I, should, I shouldn't be hitting super low collection level players in there in theory. 
But maybe maybe they had been sitting in the queue for a while, so it up paired them to me. Yeah, bots typically have a bigger, bigger spread of cosmetics, I guess. Yeah, it could have just been a low collection level player that was sitting in queue for a while. Was it a hard decision to choose to become a content creator? Not at all. Like, I... I... As someone who follows a lot of things on social media, like my path to doing content creation chat wasn't like I quit my job and decided to do content creation, making no money. Like making making stuff just for fun slash as a part-time thing was something I'd been doing for a long while. And then when it inevitably ramped up and metrics got better and it started making me some consistent money, I decided to put more effort into it. So it's not just like I flipped a switch. It was like, I'm a full-time content creator today. I hope this works out. It was, uh, I'm working at this consistently over, over a while. And I know, I know that this is what I want to, what I want to be doing. Or I know that this makes sense for me to be doing financially. This is a way to support my family. They're gonna play the blade here, and then I'm gonna Magneto it over to here, and we'll win here and here, I think is the plan. I didn't Mobius because I didn't want to trigger the Ghoulia. But maybe I should have. Maybe I should have just put him here. Just for having his effect against uh, the Zabu deck. How many hours did you stream before? I actually don't know the answer to that offhand, but you can look it up historically. If you go to a site like Sully Gnome and look at, look at my stuff. Coin flip. Lost the flip. Rip. Magneto grabs things in a random order. Feels bad, man. The extra sad part here is... No, I was going to say, we wouldn't have had a flip if we would have gone the other way, but we would have had a flip to grab Shang-Chi, right? Iceman's not really that good here. <laughs> Part of me just wants to Nakia, honestly.
Okay, and they've drawn half their deck, which means they're 100% to have, uh... To have Professor X. <laughs> You've gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> fucking joke it's i'm glad i didn't let the words come out of my mouth because like when the elsa flipped up the first thing that went through my mind was oh well at least i'm not getting professor x to this turn Escape. jokes on me i guess sure is shit getting professor x to this turn Of all the things you could pre-record, why would you pre-record that? Well played from the opponent on the snap here. There's a real chance that if I don't snap here that the, uh... That this Wolverine goes here. That's better for me. That being said, our, our hands kind of great, right? We have Jeff into Jones into Wave Mobius here. The flow of snap the last few months has been new card comes out and things are fun for a week or so and then a prison deck pops up and dominates the metagame. Yeah, I agree. I feel I feel like they need to stop dancing around it and just rip off the Professor X band-aid. Like I think uh, I think honestly Professor X at this point when 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 the Spider-Man first got his redesign a lot of people asked me do I think they should do something similar to Professor X and I said no at that point and I think I was wrong I think Marvel Snap would probably be a better game with a Spider-Man level redesign to Professor X I think I think that card just removes all like Sure, there are some people that have fun with it, but on average, it is just an, an incredibly net negative joyful card. games thanks for the membership on the youtube side appreciate the support as an extra dryer i agree at a at a minimum someone said make him so he can't come down early i think giving him a, a reasonable suggestion i heard from someone was you like you make him leech right where like if you ramp into him that's great but his effect starts on turn six would solve would solve a lot of problems I think a full redesign would be would be better, but I think at, at a minimum, some type of leech style, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen right away when you ramp into it on four.
Yeah, he only only locks up the game from turn six onwards. That's true. He also as iconic as Spider-Man, and it would be nice if iconic characters had more fun and interesting cards. Big, big agree. A Jones plus Iceman on one rather than Magento, but could go either way. It might be right just play Magneto because uh, I, I believe this is Molt, and Molt's usually playing move decks. So if he's got like a Vulture or something, Magneto's less good. This just in. I'm gonna play Jeff over here because obviously I don't want to play him here and stop Jones but I would like to be able to draw Viper and hood Viper into a clean path in the middle Now we just do that, right? I was about to say they're also a wave gamer, but that's that's our wave. <laughs> uh, uh, we totally snap on the Mobius draw here, right? I want to give a controversial opinion, so you might want to get ready to clip this for future reference. But I would like to go on record as uh, Jessica Jones is a significantly better card than Drax. You heard it here first, folks. Clip it and ship it. Last play bigger than nine. It might be. Is there, this vision can move. Oh, they could move their other vision right and play for right. Yeah, that's true. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah, I guess we are kind of a flip. Ah, the end game, New York's. Oh, yeah, we're totes to do it, Eliath. All right, I'll leave. Escape.
Vormir Valley is an interesting one. I'm gonna Mobius because I can wave the Vormir and then we get to wave going into six as well. All right, change of plans. Motherfucker. <sighs> Our wave plan is dead and we got miniaturized lab. Rip. Probably gonna want to fill the center so that way what's his name doesn't come back the hood ideally we draw Jessica Jones here to facilitate that all right I think we're just gonna play Elsa decks for the rest of the day I'm kind of I've kind of hit my... They're still going to be Nico decks, but I think I've hit my my wall on we're playing terrible decks into decks that are significantly better than ours. Phoenix for a little bit. I lied. I lied. Let's Phoenix for a little bit. We'll get to we'll get to good decks eventually. I'm gonna I'm gonna Phoenix for a little bit. How fiery they all are, chat. Uh, Deadpool is technically not destroyed, which is why it's a fun backup game plan in this deck. You can blow up Deadpool and forge or er, and torture multiple man simultaneously and have confidence with what your Phoenix Force is going to do. And Professor X stopped Phoenix Force from activating. Yeah, uh, Phoenix Force adds the card it tries to merge with. Professor X says cards can't be added.
Uh, my excitement for werewolf kind of depends on what tomorrow's updates look like. Yeah, yeah, you're just gonna 4 or 5 in a Professor X lane and Professor X flips up and then your Phoenix flips up. I think this is a pass on pass on five move torch taskmaster torch for 28 and two pads on six angle. It's a line you take with this deck with some frequency. Just make sure this stays your last played card while it scoots around and gets bigger. Yeah, some of these builds play Zola, so you could go Spider in the middle, but Zola's clunkier with Deadpool, and, and Taskmaster works with both, so. Yeah, you can't play Forge or anything else, because then the Torch isn't your last played card. There just really isn't room for Sunspot, is the TLDR. I was like, where is that from? Her go spider and then try to taskmaster it is a play that gets suggested by Twitch chat with some frequencies, so not surprised it happens out in the wild a lot. Ooh, do we die to a Loki? Nah, we're good, right? Yeah, 25. We have 30 over there. next then I assume I don't know if this build is necessarily the best build of Phoenix Force but it's the one that I enjoy the most because it like has games that it actually gets to play most consistently because like sometimes you're a sweet Deadpool deck sometimes you're a sweet Phoenix Force deck and sometimes you flop around and do nothing because combo decks do that periodically but this one having two independent game plans means you're more likely to execute one of them The Deadpool username was playing Loki and not Deadpool. I mean, to be fair, they Loki'd me at the end, which probably gave them a Deadpool. You think niche cards like Quake exist at a lower power level with the intention of being used with generation effects like Maria Hall and the Hub? Or do you think they'll be improved down the line? I think those are probably cards that I would expect to eventually get changes, like Quake is a specific example. I'm waiting one more turn here just in case I find a forge or a Nico that buffs on this Deadpool draw but maybe I should just get it going I'm 
is not going to show up what we're doing, I think. It's round one of silver. Escaped. Yeah, I think Duck's Take, the Quake is a card that just kind of gets outclassed by other cards that do similar things is very accurate. to draw on the Abbey, but that's fine, because I have Phoenix Force Taskmaster, and this is getting buffed by Niku. I'm gonna stab them. Do you even play Quake as a 2-5? Quake's very good as a 2-5. Quake's, Quake's one of the many examples of an underplayed card that doesn't get fixed simply by changing her numbers. She needs a, a different text box, probably. They're a negative deck. Yeah, maybe. Also be some kind of combo pile. Don't worry, chat. We've been very lucky. That's true. Never lost a 50-50 in my life. Not about to start now, gamers. Because I have Venom in my hand, I could Ghost Spider the Human Torch because then I could pull it and then Venom it and then Taskmaster it while also putting stats in other places. So they're setting up uh, Odin in the middle here then? I assume. If I was expecting them to Odin in the middle, I should put my Venom there to like play around a piece of interaction. We do we do die to a do die to a tech card here. Hey, Chang me not, gamer. I am Iron Man. Alrighty then. Should we forge first to make the Taskmaster too bigger? That's a good chat. That's a good line. Victory. I missed that one. Maybe we'll try it next time. Talking and clicking and all that jazz. Snap ate my head turn. Sit here like a big old stupid, just like, why isn't it going?
trying to enable Adam in their deck feels ambitious. I think I was going to keep repeating the thing I've been repeating, which is I think it would be an incredible mistake if oh, Elsa yeah. still had her same text box after tomorrow's OTA. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So if I, if I Phoenix Force, I'm one in, one in four to, to eat, eat my stuff. That's fine. We're never, we're never unlucky on this stream. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks for the prime tweak. I appreciate it. The carnage deserves a sub. Looks like I came out ahead on that that exchange chat. Lost a 25 percenter. Wait a minute. I lost a 25 percenter, and then I got two dollars and fifty cents from Jeffrey Bezos. Wake up, sheeple. The truth is out there. All right, it's about time to hit an ad roll. I'm gonna run upstairs and grab my lunch really quick. Uh, while that runs, I'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for the primer. Appreciate it. Would they have lost if you did absolutely nothing? Definitely. But then I'd be down a prime sub. So clearly, clearly losing the flip was the correct play.
All right, let's lose a couple more with this while I eat, and then uh, then maybe we'll play some good decks. I want to try. Someone asked about Nico inside of uh, Sarah Hitmonkey, and that sounds like something I'm willing to try. Nico, Nico's pretty good with Elsa. And I mean Mysterio and Elsa, obviously, but you know. Jeff, I went from rank 300,000 to top 2,000 in an hour and a half with zero losses and 16 wins. While that is, is somewhat impressive, I will commentate that going 16-0 and gaining 288,000 ranks or whatever is mostly a testament to how closely everybody's packed in terms of snap points than anything, right? You want to copy Venom? <clears throat> no, this is this is plus two, right? Motherfucker.
abide. Thanks for the seven months. Welcome back. Oh, you're playing Nico Bounce. Yeah, we played a bunch of Nico Bounce earlier. It's very good. Agree. Agree. Agree, Nico Bounce is very good. That'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, Zek Highlight will be Nico Bounce. We played it for like two hours earlier today. Election denier just got elected Speaker of the House. I mean, you could have just said a Republican got elected Speaker of the House, right? Saying election denier is kind of kind of redundant. Venn diagram there is a circle. Chat, everything that you need to know about the Republican Party in the United States is that they canned someone who wanted to run for speaker because he supported marriage equality and they made sure to elect someone who pushed conspiracy theories about the 2020 election. The conservative party in the United States is bigots and conspiracy theorists all the way down at this point. to do is special interests <laughs> selling it selling it as special interests is selling is coming up short like you don't you don't vote cast a vote against marriage equality because of special interest groups you do it because you're a fucking bigot Just go in here. This land is always changing. Escaped. All right. I'm not done eating yet, but I think I'm ready to I'm ready to play some Sarah. Do I have a Sarah? I do have a Sarah deck loaded up. Okay. How do we how do we fit Nico in here? 
Who's the who's the trim? Honestly, to do something a little different, what if I cut king and cage and play uh, hood, hood and Nico? Or sorry, I, I guess that's another card. I want hood, kill monger, Nico. I think. Cause I want, I want something that I can like sacrifice to. What's her name? Uh, Nico should sack the leftmost Mysterio. No, we're definitely not dropping Kitty. Yeah, we played a little bit of Destroy Double Up earlier today, Six Furnaces. I think that one's, that one's solid. I think Bishop's pretty good, chat. Nah, hit monkey, hit monkey. You need you need to be able to make numbers, chat. I'm definitely not dropping hit monkey. I'm also not playing armor in my Killmonger Shane She Deck gamers. Stop it. Uh, I unfortunately do not have good suggestions for uh, working with like grade school level math. I taught I taught high school and college. All right, looking to draw a copy of Sarah next turn.
Does this ever win the game? I don't know. Probably not. We got to lose the middle, right? All right, all right, Jesus, take the wheel. Is it better to play hard for the right? Yeah, baby. Probably, definitely. All right, this wins every time. Ship back. Roll time. I would put my fast forward if I had one. Short on 51, unfortunately. Sag. Cut that. We cut Shadow King, chap. We cut Shadow King for Niku. I saw copy, it's plus two, Chip. <laughs> oh, they're this stack, got it.
I think this is the play, right? Get a lieth and die. The hubris of Eliath players. <clears throat> So, interesting thought here. If I Nico Hood, I can't Killmonger this game. I think it's the line. But it is noteworthy I'm cutting myself off of one of my tools with this sequence. Which could honestly be a reason to reconsider the Killmonger in the deck. play both of these? <sighs> I'm a Mobius, I think, and we'll hold this one. I, w I want to try and not have priority, right? Okay, their bounce is good to know. And then I'll Sarah. And then we should manage to not have priority here if they play absolutely anything. I really don't care for the Niku in the spotlight. I think I'll probably buy the Midnight Sun one when it's in my shop here in a little bit, but I was not a huge fan of her spotlight. It hits, uh, her, her spotlight for this first one hits a little bit on the Uncanny Valley, I think. Too much for my liking.
Ink they play around Shang in the middle. They might play around Shang in the middle. I don't think they can play around Shang on the right. If they if they don't play around Shang in the middle, I don't think we could win. I don't know. Maybe maybe eleven's enough on Atlantis. Maybe. And they played around Shaggy in the middle. So it's one of those, our opponent lost the game because they made the, what's optimal, the optimal level two play. Level, level one is just play into the Shang. Level two is play around the Shang, and then we were one above them putting the Shang somewhere where they weren't gonna play around it, or unable to play around it. Victory. Deck looks good, I mean. Sarah control is very good. I don't know. I don't know if these couple of changes to fit Nico in are ideal, but pre pre Nico, I would have told you this was one of the better decks in the format. It's got the Elsa package, that other good tech cards. Advanced level rock paper scissors. Yeah, basically. to the demon for now because if I feel Killmonger I want to play it. And then ideally we draw Niku and she has like the demon spell next turn or the forge spell. We go Niku Mysterio hit monkey. <clears throat> they just have so much energy though, probably dead. Hey, Echo Dabi, thanks for the primer. Am I supposed to put Niku here so that way monkey's only eight? Yeah, we're dead to Eliath, but we'll, we'll spew and keep doing Eliath. That's fine. Yeah, 100% Eliath.
If I had gone all in right, we'd have won. Would we have? Would have been a three power Mysterio, a 10 power hit monkey. Yeah, I could have gone all in right. As didn't go for it. Gamer. Echo Dobby, thank you for the primer, by the way. There's a ton of great people you can send that to every month. Thanks for sending it this way this month. I think Goliath is on par with Galactus. Nah, I think it's more similar to something like Professor X. Like, I think Galactus, when it's playable and competitive, is uh, far and away its own category. Two wrongs! Well, thanks for turning that into two subs and a right here in Hooklandia. Welcome back. There's a kitty pride in my deck. Look at that. God, you... Round! What a what a fucking day it's been. Just what an what an absolute absolute day. One of the days of all time, almost assuredly. I just start filling this up in case there's uh, debris stuff going on. Mobius undoes her penalty. I forgot about that. That's not why. It feels good to be the person on the side of the Killmonger against the deck that can never beat fucking Killmonger. I've been, I've been, I've played this matchup reversed more times than I can count. Can't remember the last time I got to be on the Killmonger can't lose side. 52 weeks, I made it to a year. Wait, this is months, oh God. <laughs> the L dude, thank you for the almost four and a half years. Welcome, welcome, welcome back gamers. Welcome on in these wonderful adverts or whatever they are selling into your home. I'll see you in 120 seconds. We're gonna play some more Sarah. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out. I'm curious, by the way. I'm gonna run a poll. How many? How many people are still working on drops? Just for my own anecdotal, if you have a second, I could vote in the poll. It's hard, it's hard to gauge, like, do we have a viewer boost because of drops? Because, like, we're above where I would typically be, but, like, Nico's doing hot too, right? And these polls are unscientific, because I would, I would wager there's people farming drops passively. How's Nico working in Sarah Control? Well, Sarah Control is still very good. I don't know that we've had too many Nico games with it. 
And that's the thing, right? Like, when I try and, like, this morning's deck highlight with the Phoenix Force deck and tomorrow's highlight with the Bounce deck, the games you're gonna see, like, really showcase Nico being good in those decks. Whereas, like, we're winning games with Sarah, but so far, I don't have any games recorded where I'm like, yep, that was a Nico game. Uh, drops go for another six days still. They're running through the end of October. Well, the non-sub should be on an ad break, but the poll should still should still pop up. Only have three spotlight caches exactly, and I want Nico. Should I chance it? If Nico is the only card you're missing, statistically, you should not chance it. However, if you're someone with spending money and you'd be willing to spend to get the fourth cash, I would rip my three and then just accept that I'm going to pay Ben Brood if I need a fourth. But no, it is that it is never a good choice. It is never a good choice to gamble. <sighs> wait for the wait for the sure things, gamers. What would you say is the best deck that runs Storm? I don't think Storm's a very good card right now. I think Storm uh went to all the decks with things that move is just is just bad. That's true too. You could look and see how far you are from a fourth cash without spending money as well. This is now my second longest relationship. What's going on, homeboy? It's for the two and a half years. I know you've been here longer than that. All things considered. Uh, this person was playing Bounce when we queued into them earlier today. Their Shuri Enjoyer title was, in fact, a lie. I like Storm too. Hopefully, <coughs> hopefully tomorrow's OTA will return Storm to her former glory, Copium. These are, these are certainly Marvel Snap locations. Oh, okay, wait, I do this. I end up with six cards in my hand. Then I draw a card next turn, and then I go hood into Bishop here, and Bishop stays. Oh, snap. snap. Victory. Storm is not a card that needs buffs. Storm is a fine card that is a fantastic power level that is waiting for the metagame to shift for her to be able to be a powerful choice again. Zatron, thank you for the brand new primer. Appreciate that. I just missed Storm. We played, we lost a bunch of cubes playing Storm Jessica Jones earlier today. I too missed Storm Jessica Jones. <laughs> They're like that old toy from my childhood that I'm fond of. Apologies for the mutant hide. I was blowing my nose. <sighs> oh, as much as I want to Niku draw cards here, I think I want to get Bishop down more. Ink Delver allows us to pick the border on a card after it being set to the highest level you upgrade to. I expect if they ever add that feature, you will have to spend credits or boosters to change it. Yes. 
All right, chat, this is it. This is, this is the game. This is the game where our luck turns around. Bora, go Bora. Thank you for the prime, appreciate the support. What's the last season pass card that was as strong as Elsa? Yeah, honestly, probably Zabu Surfer. I think is that an accurate take. Hey, Navix, thank you for the brand new prime. Plus two power. I don't know that I want to compete in Ant Maze. <sighs> we do. What if we do this? Oh my gosh! And they're a Cerebro gamer. That's super funny. So they got they got hosed not only by. Oh, I hadn't triggered Ant Maze yet. I forgot I hadn't triggered Ant Maze yet. Awkward. Um, that's fine. We'll just do this and play for all three. Oh, I am getting shanged in the middle. That may be fine because I'm playing for all three. I don't know. Maybe I should have played one last card to not, not let Bishop get shanked. I'm always curious what causes this. This question goes out to Gobora and Novix um, and anybody else that did this today. We've had a few people that used their Prime sub here for the first time today. What put you over the top using your prime sub on the channel today as someone if you're someone who's been following for a number of months and today was the first time you finally dropped your prime sub here was it something i did was it something that just lined up with the other people that you usually give it to what what drove that step up in engagement and support Victory. if anybody is a first time primer that wants to share an insight for a data junkie The carnage eating your lane is what pushed me over. Bad beats. Excellent. Noted. Misclick, sorry, won't happen again, says Marty Punker, 83 month subscriber. <laughs> hey, Presley, thanks for the brand new primer. This is an old account that I realized was linked to the Amazon. I've been following from the beta on my main account. Ah, nice, Gamora. Well, thanks for dropping it off. I honestly just forget that I have a free sub. Yeah, I should I should plug it more frequently. Not a way to do it on mobile that's easy. Yeah, that's true. iOS, iOS makes it a little bit tricky to do on mobile for sure. I don't watch Twitch that often, but happened to watch you out of others on Snap today in conjunction with drops and remember I had a prime. Thanks, Novix. Bracker, 11 months. Ooh, they might have gotten our Nico. Mirage is such a scary card when you don't know what she got for you. Okay, I'm like 99% certain Nico kills the left Mysterio here. Let's find out together. Actually, this is actually my first time I've done this. In theory, that's how it should work, right? Hey, 
Hey, Swire, hope you're enjoying your break it into, into Snapple weapon. Is play, staying against a Loki deck snapping you and you're playing Sarah to Sarah in hand correct? Uh, I don't know. It's a good, it's a good question. Huh? Would I rather get Angela going or would I rather, would I rather get Sarah going? Or would I rather get, would I, would I rather get Angela going or get Kitty pumped up? I think, I think I want to do this. And then next turn we Sarah. And then the final turn we spew. And there, that was our Nico. Okay. Oh, and they got the double power one. Yeah. With them playing hard for the right, I think I Sarah here, so that way I can play for the left. And my real Mysterio is middle. I think that means we're dead. This deck can beat Mobius with some consistency, but in the games where they play their Mobius on five and you play your Sarah on five, unless you're really far ahead, they're gonna tempo you out of the game. It's, it's interesting how many, um, I should add, I should add a plug that periodically does that. <sighs> add plug. Have a prime sub you want to use on mobile? Click this link to use it and support Jeff's content for free. Probably should have done that a while ago. So this this link uh, lets people log into their browser and easily sub and use Prime. You're an iOS user. Daddy, Daddy Apple wanted to cut a Prime sub, so you can't Prime sub on a uh, on mobile on iOS. Lonnie, thank you for the primer. Well, I know where my Elsa is not going. Can I just throw a hood in the middle now? I can just throw a hood in the middle now. I usually just give my prime to whoever I'm watching when I notice it's available, so mentioning it regularly would probably get it for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of why taking taking time off from streaming on Twitch can be so detrimental. Oh, I'm gonna snap before they make their coin flip here. Make a make the decision on if they want to stay in here or not. Does iOS not have the toggle that switches from paid to private sale? It does not, because uh, Apple wanted to charge Twitch to be able to do that. Because Apple considers that sending money through the app. Uh, who do I sub to? Uh, my general rule for a subscription on Twitch is if I watch someone on Twitch more than I watched Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu or whatever for the month, then I subscribe to that person. Because I figure I pay money for all those other things. And if I'm watching someone more than that, I should give them some money for the month because they gave me as much or more entertainment than those other services that I throw dollars at. Uh, this month, 
I think, uh, if I recall correctly, I have a paid sub to Alex Kosia. I'm butchering his last name. And then uh, my Prime went to Cozy Gamer. He's back doing live streams again. Double double into Asgard's not terrible. Do live streams get YouTube buddy from YouTube preview? I believe so. I mean, we we snap Elsa on Sinister London, right? That's what the kids do. What is Alex stream? Alex does step content. He streams like late in the evenings. Sometimes, sometimes early in the evenings, he does, he does, uh, off most of, also, this probably goes without saying, most of the people I watch and thus sub to on Twitch are people who stream opposite of me, right? Because I can't watch things while I'm streaming. I haven't decided if you're always supposed to staff Niku drawing two cards on two, but... So, so far, that's what I've been doing, and it's felt right. So, I'm going to keep doing it for now. What's going on, Robolux? It's for the, the buckaroos. Don't tell people in chat you can't watch streamers while you work. <laughs> The Nico giving two cards ability might be over two. I don't know. Nico, Nico seems like a fucking nightmare to balance, and please don't ask me to try. Good luck, Godspeed, Glenn Jones. <laughs> I am, I am having a ton of fun playing. Playing with Nico, I have zero desire trying to use my brain cells to figure out if she's balanced and if no, how do you balance it? That that sounds like a job for someone more qualified than me. Uh, my hand's okay. I think we'll stay. Yikes. Maybe I'm just supposed to auto retreat Death's domain in this in this meta game. I guess Mobius is pretty good though. Got some destroy choices to make. I was looking away. I assume they Nico to Deadpool. Okay. Assumption, assumption accurate. 
Nikoing, Nikoing cards that have an effect when they blow up is currently a little, a little not great. Now you leave. Don't have to leave till turn five, chat. I get to keep, I get to get, keep the, I can win this game cope train rolling for a little bit. What? I have to leave. You're acting like I'm not going to get to retreat on turn six. And my opponent has a death show made with a Deadpool. And they're going to fill a gamma lab and get a bunch of hooks. Like all the odds are stacked against me. Anything else I should know, gamers? Yeah, your Shang-Chi is also your last card. <laughs> and your Shang-Chi is your last card. Just a 20 power Deadpool? Was that all? Anything else? Stay in there, scared. I got him on the ropes, chat. Got him on the ropes. But what but what if I draw a Killmonger? And I can Killmonger plus Shang-Chi. It's only cubes. My mama didn't raise no coward. Maybe they retreat. Watch watch them throw priority appropriately. Oh my god, they're totally gonna throw priority, aren't they? Ooh. Never give up, never surrender. Cowards, all of you. This is the part where they play Deadpool plus Null and we lose both in a miserable fashion, right? over playing Sarah. We had someone in the subs discord link a non Darkhawk bounce deck that has Hawkeye in it. I would like to use our new Hawkeye variant in some things, so let's do that for a little bit, huh? Can't find a valid deck on your clipboard. Oh, do they mess up the export? No, no, I just didn't copy the last two parts. Marvel snap deck codes are a reasonable length. Sometime soon, please, huh? This deck has no disruption in it. It's actually just all pedal to the floor linear, huh? Let's do it. Let's get linear, linear. I want to get linear. Let's get into linear. Do 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 do. 
Breaking news. They get our demon 100% of the time there, right? That's how that works. Drawing Falcon or Elsa there probably means I'm dead. Especially with the dream dimension being worse for us than it is for them. Maybe, maybe Niku gives us the draw spell when we have a shot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that one's going to do it. <sighs> Wait, they didn't play their Typhoid Berry? Oh, I guess they're playing their Typhoid Berry uh, next turn, right? For five. The really big Nico. Wow, and they played for the middle. Urban medium, thank you for the primer, appreciate it. Uh, we're beating Taskmaster, we're losing to Red Skull by one. Sick. QR Master X85 Gamer who was present when dinosaurs were still watching twitch.tv with the 93 month resubscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back. It's been a trip. And inch it on up towards the uh, the hundred month mark. I offered. Uh, you're the only other one that's kind of close to this RQR Master X. So Tubos is coming up on a hundred months, and I told him when he hits a hundred months, he can pick a variety game for me to play on stream for a couple hours. Since since those of you have seen it all, you can pick any of it, and we'll run it back. One hundred, yeah. 100, 100 months. Two, two bows hit 97 or 98 last night. If I recall correctly. Is that 97 months in a row? Yeah, that's how long my channel's been partnered for. Two bows, two bows is concurrent.
Okay, with the beast draw, we'll do this. And then we'll get to Angela, redeploy ones, Falcon them next turn. Be careful of Professor X, never heard of him. What does is, what is be careful of Professor X mean? What actionable thing am I doing to be careful of Professor X at this juncture? That's the, that's the thing in moments like that. It's like, wait, what is, what is that actually... What does being careful here entail? He's behind you. Oh, shit. I actually don't need to play Bast. Because my, ne my next turn's gonna be Forge, Hawkeye, Armor, Armor Bast. Or is it? Or is it actually? What if I... What if I do this, and then next turn we Chavez double zero? That's the line. That's the line. Final answer. Final answer. So Jeff can move, and then we can play to all three paths here, right? We go forge here, make the Hawkeye bigger, and then we go like Hawk here, Chavez here. Wait, if you play Hawk back into Anilad, does he trigger himself? He does, but I have to hide my game screen, so I show him triggering himself live on stream. We'll get a, we'll get a terms of service. I saw that episode on Disney Plus. <laughs> Definitely got to be masked on one here. Despite the demon trigger being useful, getting to pump Angela up sounds lovely. Any plans on adding the seven TV emotes to? Nah, probably not. All right, can we draw our armor in the destroy matchup? Are my glasses frames designed to be more comfortable with my headset? That is exactly what they're what they're for. You check them out there on the Urban Samurai. Uh, he, I, I, urban samurai. All right, I think we're just vibing. Waiting for, waiting for a better Nico spell. Snap, 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 snap. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Immortal. Hey, 
Every time the destroy deck Killmonger is my bounce deck before a critical turn, it feels like Christmas shit. It's sad that I won't get to bask my rock, but you know, that's fine. Nico, Nico's gonna finally hit the draw spell next turn, and then we'll turn the rock into two cards. It'll be it'll be just like we drew it up. This Twitch streams pre-recorded, etc., etc. Now, I think I want to hold this rock, right? Yeah, I have a forge, I have a forge trigger on sped. Dead to a null, but they got subterranean, so maybe they don't have it. Ooh, I guessed wrong on where they were gonna put their stats. Rip. Wow, they had their null and they didn't play for Baxter building? subterranean game where the opponent has it all and we drew two extra cards and died. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Silver gaming. Oh, they're unranked. Okay. Suddenly, suddenly the world makes more sense. It's like quick silver gaming on my ladder. Same number of cards in our deck, so they're not Agatha before anybody suggests it. You always tell if someone's Agatha chat by comparing their deck count on the trackers here. This will put a demon in my hand, and then one, two, three, four, five come back to my hand, and the kitty stays. Man, that's second awkward.
This gives me a demon and these back to my hand, right? And it puts me up to 19 in the middle. Victory. And they go up to 11. Okay. Brett Mister, thanks for the brand new primer. Appreciate that. You like blue, blue marble plus onslaughts, what we would possibly need to play around there. Ooh, gamers, the shop rolled over. And you know what else is rolling out at two o'clock? Some adverts. Gobble these up while I gobble up my shop. Thanks for hanging out. I'm so torn, chat. I'm so, I'm so torn. I think it's Sisters Grim. On the other hand, these ones kind of look inked by default, which fits the vibe of the rest of my, my cards. The Midnight Suns one looks bad when split. I mean, I won't split it until I can get it to inked or gold. And I'm not gonna play both, chat. It's not, I don't, I don't buy every variant. Listen, Second Dinner. If Second Dinner implemented letting me favorite multiple versions of a card and then I'd get my favorite ones selected at random, I would do that. But they haven't implemented that yet, so I don't know why why I would buy more than one. I guess the the spells kinda look out of place with this one, right? They look pretty reasonable with this one. All right, we'll let chat vote. Hey, chat, choose my fate. <sighs> Two minutes. Midnight, midnight suns. Sister Grim. Wow, chat is. Chad is never this, this sure of anything. This is, this is a lot of, normally when we put up a two, two question thing, it's like split 50, 50. Chat, chat really wants a goth girlfriend. Yeah, apparently. All right, well that poll finishes. I'm gonna go run my mustard back upstairs, BRB. Five percent of the vote for the goth girlfriend. Nice. 
All right, 65% of you <sighs> voted for the Sisters Grim variant. It's a lot. Chat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know a little secret. I've been streaming here on Twitch.tv since May 1st, 2012. That's 11 and a half. Guys, that 11 and a half years ago? Holy shit, it's 11 and a half years ago. And if there's anything I've learned in 11 and a half years on Twitch, it's never fucking listen to Twitch chat. All right, easy variant. Power plays. Thanks for the primer. I appreciate it. We need, four, we need four more boosters so we can get her to gold. I'm thinking based. <laughs> oh man, her hair blows in the wind too. It's beautiful, chat. It's beautiful. Dang it, Jeff, my state legislature takes away my vote enough as it is not you too. <laughs> demon. Uh, I don't know that I, uh, I want to turn any of these into demons. They're all pretty good cards. Actually, like the record to reflect seeing their Niku was reinforcing my decision because now my Niku is more special. If most of you plebs want this uh this one, mine'll be mine'll be more unique out in the wild. Oh, there's a new feature location. Shit. What's the feature location? Am I just supposed to do this? I'm probably just supposed to do this, right? Turn it flips, each card you play burns the top card of their deck. Okay, so it makes death and dull better.
their variant won the game. Something like that. I don't know, chat. I've played two games with the Midnight Suns, Nico. And she has been in my opening hand 100% of those games so far. That's all, that's all I'm saying. This is 100% conclusive evidence. Coincidence? I think so. <laughs> snap. Uh, that's a snap. Go boosters. Four. We have four Nico boosters, chat, so I get her to gold. Does Nico's affect every card you play after? No, just the uh, one card immediately following. And it doesn't have to be that turn is the important part. So you can like play her on one and then fill it, use it the next turn. Snap. A few times I'm not getting ruined by Triskelion as the bounce deck. Oh, come on! I was so young, Chet. Oh, I should have put Nico here to play to uh, Elsa as a draw. Missed, uh, missed points on my kitty. Is 11 enough in the middle? They're going to gain two. Probably not, right?
Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That's fine. This wins every time, right? And 16 on the left and 7 on the right. I fucked this up. Uh, these need to go in the other order. So that way, if I get shang chi um, I keep the six bonus. When half of your deck is one drops and you don't have one on one. I just want to be energy efficient here. for here is probably a retreat angle. Get RNG into something useful at the collapse mine. Can't fill both of these because of the Sokovia. It says six up to eleven, and then fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I actually don't need the Nico here. I don't know. I don't know that 10 wins here. It might actually. Sure.
Alliance gamers are built different. Isn't she pretty, chat? Yeah, it's a good take, uh, Deadly. The Thanos deck with that X on four. Presser X is such an obnoxious card. Chat! Is this how the other half lives? I can't, I can't remember the last time my gold only had two digits. How do you, how do you get by? We're, we're broke. So, the only thing you really need to know about getting caught up when it comes to getting back into the game hit streak is that you want to be aware of what cards are coming up in upcoming spotlight caches so that way you can um, use your spotlights on weeks where you're missing multiple cards. The kind of catch-up mechanic for being behind on releases is... Oh, gross. They have a 1-5 kitty is uh spotlights giving you more stuff essentially i feel like when you've got more gold than hogla it happens more often than you think I think I'd actually rather do this, right? I think I'm staying for the stab. Okay, so there's Shang's used up, but I have to win left and right. Okay, so this costs two. I'm about to get fucking Shadow Kinged over here, aren't I? Impressive last turn for us. D I can't play demons left. There's a Hellfire Club. Oh, order for Nico. Yeah, Nico could have been a 12. It's fine. We're getting Shadow King that it doesn't matter. Or Killmonger. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. A little lame card. Oh, so boring. Really, really unfortunate location variants that game, huh? If, if this had been a location that let me play my demons or this hadn't been a location that gave them hulks, I think we, we win this very easily, right?
but it worked out just exactly perfectly for their deck full of crappy tech cards. Yeah, they also had Shag into the Gamma Lab inside of the exact window where I couldn't armor it. Yeah, it's fine, Yuri. Man, do I do I Nico the hood or do I do I get greedy? Probably just Nico the hood. They might move Jeff and choose to kill their Electro. I'm gonna give them that option. Yeah, just not slow my own game plan down here. That's fine, we're getting Sandman and then we're retreating. Wait, bud, uh... I wonder if they thought it wasn't going to have the ongoing effect. Once upon a time, it would have worked that way. Not anymore. I think they thought they were going to have two extra energy and be able to play multiple cards. Ah, my 2295th hood booster. Tried to spend all of those in one place, gamers. Saving up for the Ultra Whale split. The sad part is, like, when I bought my second hood variant, it hit a premium split so quick. I was like, oh, this is good. I got a lot of boosters in case we miss. And he actually, he actually has fool's gold by default. This is zero splits, just infinite border. It basically looks gold. And then this one was gold with green. And I was like, fuck that. I'm going again. And then the third split had the purple crackle. We called that good enough. It would cost so much money to use all those boosters. Yep. My initial hood split took me a lot. It took me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It took me nine, nine splits to get this one. But this, this ink split's pretty good. I still use him on occasion too. 
The rainbow, rainbow crackle ink is pretty, pretty solid. Play a few more with this bounce deck. And then someone, a couple of people had suggested something I wanted to try. We should try Nico inside of Deadpool negative. Can you imagine Nico on, on three with the draw spell, play your negative on four, kill him and draw two negative cards? That's a, that's a Christmas I'd like to, I'd like to experience at least once. Mobius and Mobius heavy breathing. Top card of my deck is gone. You got me. No time to play Angel anyways. Wakanda forever. Is Nico drawing cards even good? It only gets me one. Th it only gets me one thing. I'm not going to see otherwise, right? There's only Hood, Forge, and then Chavez in my deck because of the Jubilee and the Hotel Inferno. Yeah, in general, yes. In this spot, I don't think it's good though. Okay, yeah, they're Cerebro 3, but they have a Black Panther here, which is funny. Uh, actually, I want to play him here. So that way... Um... Is that way when they Valk me here? Yeah, I think they want to Valk left. Right? God, how fucking big is this, Nico? She's... 5, 8, 16? I, I was not expecting... I was not expecting... Nico's 2x my power to be as good as it is as frequently as it is. This is great, says local man about to be killmongered.
no, we crush that. Not even, not even close. You'd have 56 power Nico, you see. Yeah, but that was Shuri's labs. That doesn't really count. <coughs> They forgot about Black Panther Nigga Streamer bonus. Yeah, I think so. Hey, Kate Della. Thank you for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Of 2x Nico. I just want all of these to be here so I can beast the ball back. We have Moon Girl Nikoed, and the next turn they have different spells, and the Moon Girl Nico doesn't remember which spells the first Nico has already done. So she can uh, re loop through ones that have come up earlier. Keep Hawkeye in hand for Killmonger. I didn't want him to get bested, Yuri. That's fine. They're basically just didn't do anything, right? And I'm really looking forward to splitting her aggressively. As soon as, soon as, soon as we get enough boosters to get her get her to ink we are gonna we're gonna buy some credits phrasing I said what I said all right any any time you can copy Elsa with Nico. You should do it and you should snap. Hey, thanks for taking the time to drop that off, Armory. Every time you drop by and press that button, it sends me two fifty from Jeffrey Bezos, and I appreciate it all the same. Oh, they might have just taken my Elsa gamers.
please have my armor. Please have my armor. Oh, that's there, Elsa. All right, they have four cards out of my deck. Did they get a second Elsa is the question. They also got rid of their Mirage card, so it must have been armor. Draw a Falcon here, I think, is our best. Fast is the worst. I think Falcon's the best. So we go. Kitty into Forge into Falcon. Hey, Colby. Thanks for the Prime. Okay, they just Loki two cards and then turned Loki into a demon. You know, chat, I'm starting to think there might be something to this Elsa card. That's enough to win middle, right? It's plus six, plus six again, up to 18, and then plus 11, 13, 15, 33, and then this is 22, 23, 24, 39. We get armor left and then kitty into dark dimension to hedge. I don't hate that. Sure. Duck a random shang chi. Yeah, they're just leaving. Victory. Ducking, ducking a random shang chi is fine. You know what else is more than fine shit? The wonderful things these adverts are looking to sell you. And remember, if you're done being sold things, simply buy Hoglandia with a prime sub or regular sum to dodge the adverts altogether. Otherwise, catch you on the other side of 120 seconds. See you in a minute. That's maybe a little bit long. We gotta work on that. We gotta work on. We gotta work on. We gotta work on teeing up the uh, teeing up the sales pitch. Hey, Moraland! Thank you for the brand new tier one. Appreciate the support. What is wrong with people? What is what is wrong with people? The kids aren't right, chat, okay? The chil the children are not okay. They're not they are not remotely okay. 
The Nico Sarah Declas has been killing it. 14 and 1 now, up to rank 2,500. Nice, Shady Face. Yeah, I think Sarah Control is very good. And Nico, Nico's like a good card inside of it, right? That's fine. I shouldn't, I just shouldn't look at what. I just shouldn't look at like what other people are doing. We should just go back to. I'm sure our stats are terrible. Whoa, our stats were actually not bad with this pile of cards. Look at that. 51% of Rooney. Spot the difference here. Bass, Deadpool, Forge, Carnage, Dude. Killmonger, Venom. They're the same thing, right? Corporate says they're the same thing. Alright. That's the meta looking like. More of the same. OTA, deliver us tomorrow, please. I really need to get a null variant at some point, chat. I should, I should probably figure that out. I have 800 null boosters and should probably buy a variant at some point. Mr. Negative also needs money spent on him at some point, too. Almost a thousand boosters. I believe every null spotlight. I believe every Null Spotlight has been on weeks where there weren't any new cards, if I recall correctly. The November 7th Spotlight. That again is a week where there's no new card, right? Yeah, yeah, it's another, it's another week where there's no new card. Hey, Dr. Grindle, have you been playing Rogue or Death Strike, or have you just been raw dogging it, hoping to dodge Mobius with this? So I know you mentioned you were playing some of this. Split Mr. Negative. I only have like one split on him. Two splits. So even if I spend my 900 credits to split him, he can't be inked. So he stays, he stays where he is, Chip. Do I want to fit Rogue in here? I don't really have any good cuts for Rogue is the problem. You're playing Lady Death Strike. The problem with Lady Death Strike is I can't play Bast and Deadpool, right? Hey, Cybates. Thanks for the 11 months. Welcome back. It's what Forge is for. You cut Killmonger. Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. Nico's like half a way to pump him too. All right, let's do this. I want to play Rogue rather than Lady Death Strike, but we'll do, we'll do this. Hold on. We're not raw dog in a chat. We put a Rogue in the deck. Let's put some sleeves on.
No title. Nah, I don't usually take the time to put titles on. Too much work. Hello? Press the button, gamer. Been playing this list. Did you apply a lot? I've run into Mobius super often, but when I do, I just abandon the negative angle and lead into playing Deadpool. That makes sense. And honestly, it makes me just want to not play Rogue. Maybe we'll put the Rogue back for Killmonger and call it a day. Magic, I think, and then we'll go Forge, Deadpool, Carnage next turn. Jeff playing Mr. Negative got me into Snap. It's one of the more interesting things the game has to offer, for sure. Our hand is actually just like the non-negative nuts. <laughs> yeah, just, honestly, I think this hand has convinced me I'm going to cut the rogue and play Killmonger and just lead into the Deadpool hands when we don't draw negative. So I get to go... I get to go Deadpool... Oh... No, I don't want that one. I get to go Deadpool into Venom, and then we get to go Massive Null into Zola the Null, plus play 20 power Deadpool. Do I like the new location? I think it's fine. I think in... Most games, the new location is basically textless or close to it, and we need more of those. Hey, Gerald Remy, thank you for the 11 months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. If you haven't seen this deck list before, this is the type of fun off-meta stuff you're missing by not being subscribed to my Hoaglandia Snap YouTube channel. I'm always playing all sorts of wacky different things there. Certainly one of the ones that makes the numbers go burr. I'm gonna I'm gonna put Deadpool left to play for all three just in case something weird happens here. Yeah, the opponent's deck doesn't usually play Null. They look like a uh, Phoenix Force build. They're probably close to the Phoenix Force build that I posted today.
Everybody for hanging out today, by the way. My little Twitch tracker here says that we've had over 200 new followers this stream. For anybody that's new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jeff Hoagland. I stream full-time here on Twitch. You'll find me here Monday through Friday during the week. Usually I stream from about 9 a.m. Central until about 4 or 5 p.m. Central in the afternoon. Marvel Snap is what I stream full-time. Usually we play a ton of different decks here. You'll see us rotating every uh, usually hour, hour and a half or so, two hours at the absolute most. I'm not the type of person that can just sit there and no life a best deck for an eight-hour stream. Variety is the spice of life. We do a mixture of some better decks like the bounce deck we were playing a little bit ago in the top thousand of the ranked ladder, but we also play some uh, meme or bad off meta decks like this one with some frequency here. And thanks to wonderful folks like Dumathane and Benster. Thank you for the three and six month resubs. Uh, this is my full time job here. Wouldn't be able to be here without the support of folks like that. Easy snap on the super flow. Get to play this Mr. Negative, invert our deck, and then grab three fresh cards. Is Nico and Cerebro 2 worth a meme? We'll probably get to that tomorrow morning. I agree the lack of series drops can only be described as a bummer. I wish I wish I had <clears throat> I wish I had better things to say other than it's the lack of a bummer, but I I am not joking when I tell you that once a month or so I message my second dinner contacts and just say, "Hey, any word on series drops?" It's like the one kind of big stain on an otherwise great first year. Any news would be good news. And uh, unfortunately, the silence has just been. It's been exactly that. It's been silence. I keep I keep asking and they keep pointedly just not responding. I don't I don't, I don't even have a I can't tell you something that's NDA'd. It's uh, every time I ask the question or bring it up, nothing gets said back. Now, our deck list here is actually one that's capable of powering through Hella Tribunal doing stuff on occasion. Unfortunately, that usually requires our, like, Null plus Zola. We don't have either of those here currently. What a, what a game of Marvel Snap. <laughs> Did I have contacts at the Magic the Gathering team and what were those like in general? For people uh, that are new to my content to ask a question like that, it makes me chuckle and you'll understand, you'll understand why hearing that question makes me chuckle and once I explain this. Um, Wizards of the Coast, as a company, has a shit list of content creators of people they refuse to work with or even throw a bone to. And you get onto that list by being vocally critical of choices and things that they've done in the past. And I was certainly on that list. So no, I did not have any interactions remotely close to what I had with at anybody at Wizards of the Coast because Wizards of the Coast was 
was, I don't know if they're still run by, but was run by incredibly petty and vindictive people that can't take constructive criticism to save their lives. Escaped. Thin skin. Thin skin's a good, a good descriptor. In comparison, Second Dinner's not the first big company, big, and they're an indie company, so they're smaller. They're not the first company I've worked directly with. Like I've done, for people that are familiar with my background, I've done official commentary and content for uh, Riot Games and the Pokemon Company before. So I've worked worked with both of them off and on over the years. And the both of both of those are pretty reasonable to work with. I wouldn't I wouldn't say the Pokemon Company or Riot were were bad but they're bigger companies which makes it hard, harder to get good communication through so despite second dinner's lack of communication on some things like the series downgrades i will say that in general second dinner has been more communicative than the bigger game companies i've worked with in the past where there's more layers of bureaucracy and bullshit the communication has to go through for lack of a better term I think, that, I think that can be easy to be missed too. Like it's it's frustrating to not get updates on the things we want updates on. But they're still they're still very good on average, I think is a, a fair objective thing to say. Yeah, the, the Pokemon Company had some weird rules about, um, who was it? The Pokemon Company had some weird rules about, uh, posting spoilers or interacting with things that were considered spoilers for their games that felt strange. And, um, what was the other thing? Oh, uh, initially for the Pokemon Company to work with me, um... They got some pushback because I swear casually during some of my content. So I had to, when I was working with them, I had to clean some of that up. Which was, uh, which is nice to be working back in the realm of adult IPs since, uh, I don't, I don't have to worry about that nearly as much now. To drop all our, all our swears all we want. Think of the children. I mean, and I I get it for them, right? Like, it's uh, Pokemon's a uh, family friendly IP. Am I snapping? I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to like 50 50 a Nolzola here, right? Is this Zola the Forge into Null? Nah, I don't think so. I got a, I got a Null, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip a coin here. We could Nico the Limbo. Nicoing the Limbo might have, might have scammed him. Yeah, it's a good call. I'm here to gamble opponent. Here for a good time, not a long time. Going on, Mage Cake. Thanks for the five bunch. We would have we would have won with the scam, said. Alright. Where are they going, Hella? Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. We queued, we queued into a hella gamer playing fucking Super Scroll? And Shadow King? Alright, fine. You want it, you want it more than I do, I'm gonna go next. Actually, actually fucking cursed.
There's a beeping sound on your phone. Let me see. Alright, sorry gamers. No, it's not an Amber Alert. Their phone, I was like, it wasn't holding the notification up. It says the family link was ringing it, which means my wife is somewhere else in the house and she's ringing his phone trying to get his attention. Because their, their phones are mine and Christie's old Android devices that don't have SIM chips in them. I should really, I should probably just put Discord on it so I can call him. We can call him via that when he's at home on the Wi-Fi. Usually, usually read my messages. Oh. And that's my my wife in chat messaging me. I bet she messaged me. Gordy, that was a, that was a Jacob yell. We all live there. Mom's gonna be pulling up outside in a second. Get your stuff ready. Get ready to go to your class. Got it. Thank you. You're good. I was only half paying attention to this, and Mindscape sucks, so I'm gonna uh, mulligan this game. Escaped. Cell phone shape gaming device. That's exactly what they are, Duck Doolittle. Because my, my years old, our years, our years old flagship, oh, I pressed the wrong button. God damn it. Our years old flagship devices are much faster than like tablets we would buy for them. Most, most Android tablets that aren't thousands of dollars have really cheap, cheap crappy hardware. Escaped. I mean, for the amount of time that I was distracted there, Mr. Milky, it should have clipped through. Like, I understand that life happens sometimes, but if life happens sometimes and you don't concede your game or your turn one or whatever, you should lose the game or skip the turn. The turn. The turn one timer should not be long enough for people to be doing something else simultaneously inside of a game that's designed to play quickly. They're so awful. We have a we have an Amazon Fire tablet for our toddler too, Caleb, just because it's got a big bumper on it. Oh, I queued up for a ladder match. Rip. Um It's fine. It'll be fine. Victory. I had a fire tablet five years ago when my older two were younger and we have a more current one today and they're still trash referendums still still trash Is that already inked? No, just Midnight Suns. Which is one of the reasons to buy the Midnight Suns. It looks pseudo inked by default. The ours is brand new as Trash Robux. They're so slow. Just the tech specs are awful and the interface is super cumbersome and heavy. Yeah, not, not sponsored by Amazon Fire Tablets. Not even a little. Oh, it's like Christmas gamers. It's like Christmas gamers. 
You get what you pay for, they're like 50 bucks. Yeah, but there isn't the option to pay for more is the thing. Like I, I would pay more money for a higher, a, a slightly faster kid's tablet with a bumper on it like that, but they just don't, they don't exist. Hold please. Mother of God. I came I came back to Christmas, chat. Man, it's it's easy to have the nuts when uh you draw two extra cards. Yes, this interaction here where you saw me crash, it is listed as a known issue on the homepage. And they also note that every time the crash happens, people you should be able to reconnect successfully, so it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Shit. Do we do this? Or do I Mr. Negative? I think I just do this. It's close though. Enough said, Bob. Yeah, I, I know I have Zola and Iron Man in my deck, but like, it's kind of hard to pass up a Deadpool this big, right? Two shots at, at Zola here. Traditional Destroy doesn't usually play Arnim Zola. We'll see though. My Null's also bigger than theirs because he's been bested. I will say, Dr. Grindle, I forgot how good this deck is against Traditional Destroy. Like being a Null Zola deck makes you so good in these matchups. I and mean, like sometimes you also just have like not so Mr. Negative draws. Knocked you out of a null, uh, neg null variant. We were just talking about that. Most of most of the most of the null variants have been in spotlight caches. Uh, I snapped a while ago, gamers. All right, they won the left. Victory. They kind of look like they might have a Zola as well. Why? What about a single card my opponent has played makes it look like they're likely to have Zola? Please explain. So far, every single card my opponent has played is simply the stock destroy deck and the stock destroy deck does not play Zola by the numbers.
Mother of God! Yes, when you have two Nikos, they get different spells every turn. Does this switch Iron Man back? The peak only hits cards in your hand, Chet. Stonks are way up, gamers. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, the question mark is uh, reset a location to a random location. No, nah, I don't think I'm scamming. I'm gonna let my numbers go burr. Nah, chat. I, I ain't need to scam nobody this game. We got we got free dull free Zola. Nico is easily the most broken card in Marvel Snap right now. And by that, I mean watch this game crash again and again and again. Mr. Deadpool's crashing the game. We're drawing cards now and crashing the snap now. You can crash if you wanna, you can leave this game behind. And if you crash when you get back, you're gonna have two more cards. Two more cards, two more cards. It crashes both players. It does in fact, it does in fact crash both players. Oh, is one of these a forge? You're right. I missed I missed four points on the left. Well, I'm not sure how we'll recover, but we'll try and figure it out. Victory. Marvel Snap is pay to win, because if you can afford a more expensive phone, you can load back into the game faster after Nico crashes it. <laughs> I can't, I can't even, I can't even argue with that chat. It's just, it's just, just the facts with J. Jonah Jameson. Um, I think I'm actually letting this shrink my Iron Man for the sake of not needing to play it out. I know some of you at home 
are like, Marvel Snap's not always like this, Nico crashing the game is uncommon, but watch these games and you tell me this isn't peak Marvel Snap gameplay crashes and all. Why did I Deadpool and Myrtle Rogue? Because I'm going to Carnage this turn. Let me tell you a story about a girl named Kitty. <laughs> uh, she's a wonderful lady. I have Null and Zola and all sorts of goodies in my deck, yeah? Story about Kitty, no way, can't do. <laughs> oh, that's the good stuff right there. Poor, poor Kitty. <laughs> uh, we're having a grand old time this afternoon, gamers. And it's been quite, quite the afternoon. I'm happy, happy to be here. That's true. This morning we were, we were due for some good variants and beats, right? The start of the start of the stream today was rough. All right, unfortunately, opponent, we have in fact full skunk to you. I am Iron Man. I am Iron Man. The only thing more fantastic than this gameplay chat is the stuff these adverts are about to try and sell you. Thanks for hanging out. We're going to play some more negative Deadpool here in 120 seconds. Don't go anywhere. Why are nulls the same power? Oh, because theirs was peaked. Does this deck want Taskmaster? I don't think there's room, unfortunately. All your, all your slots are tight. It was, hard. it was hard to fit Nico in. This is, we were talking the other day about decks where Taskmaster is better than Zola. This is the opposite. I think this is a deck where Zola is better than Taskmaster. And you can't kind of can't fit both. Wait, there's a there's a notice. There's a notice on the end game thing too, right? I can just reach out with this. Objectively speaking, Nico is the most broken card in Marvel Snap right now because she crashes the game when you destroy cards that are in her Be careful out there, gamers, and reconnect quickly. Send Zeet. Zeet it out into the multiverse. Up top. 
Season pass 77 with a week and a half to go. No big deal. What would you swap for Nico? Uh, what was Nico's slot beforehand? Um, gamers, help me out. What did we have in Nico's slot beforehand? I don't remember. Nah, it wasn't X23. Oh, I had Psylocke. Yeah, I had Psylocke. You can also play Rogue, Rogue, or Taskmaster, or Lady Deathstrike. copies of any of the cards in my hand so we'll vibe for now on the Nico. she hits the destroy mode or the plus two power mode for deadpool it's great so we're 33 percent to get a good one next turn don't really want to 2x Nico. just hanging out you want the next season pass card is next season pass card is Miss Marvel. You want my review on the upcoming November cards? You can grab it here. She looks real sweet though. It is a nice Nico variant. I agree. Get the other one in the shop too. No, there's really no reason to buy multiple variants for a card. You need to give us a reason to to want to do that. So many choices here. I think it's negative though. Now, with them bouncing Nico, I do need to worry about them scamming. I do need to worry about them scamming us. I should have snapped them here. London. London's pretty a pretty mediocre location for them. Hey, right, go middle venom. Good lad. Good lad. I'm gonna play out the Iron Man just in case their other Nico in hand lets them scam here. I know Nico copies, don't know what the other one had, but if you return her to your hand, does she? Yes. Yeah, cards, cards track information across everywhere. Yeah, them filling here makes me I feel am. like they're gonna try and run pull me. I am Iron Man. Oh, but wait. Oh, did they forget there's another turn? 
They forgot there's another turret, gamers. Oh, no, wait. Uh, maybe they just miscounted? Mother of God! Mother of God, it's a Killmonger! All right, well, I wasn't sure what we were gonna do, and then we drew Killmonger, so we were gonna go Killmonger, Deadpool, Deadpool, and just make these nulls just like absolute units. Also, going back to the going back to the variant discussion from earlier, this is what the other variant looks like right now with her symbols, chat. This is so much worse than the Midnight Suns one. So this one it's uh it's above her head here. So I am confident. That my assessment of Twitch chat never knowing what was going on is accurate. <laughs> Glenn said they're changing it in a future patch. Yeah, but you're going to have a weird symbol over her head for another month though because it's not going to be in the patch on Tuesday and patches are every four weeks so gosh I thought for sure they'd falcon this turn have any bounce cards. Should have been greedy with my uh my killmonger, I guess. Oh I could have Nico killmongered and had another Nico. Yeah, that's that was totally the play. I agree. Good shout. And this is the turn they draw Falcon, right? Nope. you feel you on that one opponent Ben Ben there GG mage cub tough tough matchup from your side to call Killmonger the second most offensive card in Marvel Snap? Is that is that a hot take or is that just like it's reasonable and we agree with it? It's probably third. It's easily top five. 
I'd give it, I'd give it number, I'd give it number, uh, number two. My personal, my personal shit list, he's number two. I'm staying, gamers. I've got magic. I've got negative. It's a beautiful blade split. What's number one? My number one is Professor X. I'm a simple man. Fuck Professor X. All right, we dodge drawing null, which is perfect. I don't know. Maybe maybe talking about it with chat can convince me otherwise, but I don't I don't know that I have a these cards are offensive list outside of outside of Professor X at the moment. Are there, are there other cards I should be upset about? I guess I think it's like Professor X, Killmonger, Eliath are like three. Are there any other cards I should be mad at? No, nah, I, th I think post Mobius. I think post Mobius wave is pretty whatever. Honestly. Elsa. I don't, I don't, I, I don't dislike Elsa's design. Yeah, just, just for clarity, what I'm talking about here isn't a, I'm not talking about, um, cards that I think are, What's the word? What sort of thing? I'm not talking about cards that I I think are too strong. I'm talking about cards that I think are like design mistakes. Yeah, maybe maybe Galactus still makes the list. Like Elsa, Elsa's design I think is actually very good. Her numbers are just too big. All right, we really need to draw null gamers. Unfortunately, I think we have to go because Null's at the bottom of our deck. What cards like Adam Warlock and Baron Mordor? I mean, Baron Mordor is a card that needs a redesign. It's not offensive, though. Baron, Baron Mordor is bad. Oh my god, we're actually just gonna draw our entire deck. Deadpool. 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 Mother of God. Mr. Negative. Mr. Negative.
Ay, 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 ay. It is my Shuri's lab now. Do, 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 do. Oh my god, there's only two cards in my deck. So I know I know what we're guaranteed to draw here then. <laughs> we're guaranteed to spike Null Zola in the next two turns. Sometimes sometimes it works out that Null and Zola are on the bottom of your deck, gamers. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. You basically never want to play Deadpool on one in this deck. You want to be able to draw Bast or Forge or Nico to pair with him. So there's a lot of lot of downside to playing him out, not any real upside. Same thing here. And then we're in no no rush. If I spike a Forge or a Nico that buffs or destroys. Those are both rewards for waiting. I'll snap on the forge drum. Starts a little middling. Yeah, you can also hit something like Wakanda Embassy that rewards you for waiting is also accurate. Oh my god. The only draw in our deck better than this was Nico Minaru. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty baller one for sure. Can I have another snap? Yeah, exactly. So we'll do this. And then on the last turn, I'll have nine and I'll be able to Venom this, kick this up, and then Zola it across. I'm about to get Shang chi out of this Invisible Woman, aren't I? It's fine. We'll go down in the blaze of glory that we deserve. Die with a massive null on my board. There's no way their deck has space for Shang Chi, right? Listen, chat. People love putting tech cards in every deck. See you in Valhalla. Yeah. So there's a Zabu. There's a Shang for the average Marvel Snap Gamer. Ah, just 29 points, eh? Not quite enough. Victory. Unforgiven. Thanks for dropping off that Prime again. Good to have you drop it by, regardless of what your gaming habits are. We know their deck now. What's the one card I don't know? Oh, it's Chavez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. Oh, snap. Yeah, they discarded Chavez and Dracula. Competitive Twitch chat advantage. Exactly. All right, and then our best draw next turn is Carnage. Is Hulk their only high evolutionary card? It appears so, which seems not great.
All right, we want to avoid drawing Iron Man and Zola. Those are the cards we want to stay in our deck so that way we can make them free with negative. Nailed it. Um, I'm going to play negative on the left because I can't magic here and I want to keep a clean path to Nola my Zol. Nola my Zol, Zol my Nola. Whatever, whatever these made up names words are. Blah, blah, blah. All words are made up. Yeah, but some words are more made up than others. The vault does reopen on turn seven. Why is Invisible Woman in their deck? Can someone help me understand why Invisible Woman is in their deck? And the S on the screen is for our most recent sponsor, Surfshark. Check them out for all of your VPN needs. If you need to secure your internet connection or appear as though you're in a place where you are not, Surfshark has a deal for you thanks to Oglandia. You get to stash Ghost Rider until you can draw a card later, sure. Okay, and now, thanks to Nico, I just get to draw my entire deck here, right? We actually, actually just have it all. I want it all. And I want it now. What a game of Marvel Snap Gamers. I don't know that I expect this deck to be top tier, but Nico really feels clean inside of it. Nico, you mean Ancestral Recall. I mean, pro proportionally speaking, Nico is way better than Recall when she draws, right? Like, Ancestral Recall draws a 20th of your magic deck. Nico, Nico draws 17% of your snap deck. The equivalent of Nico in Magic the Gathering is drawing what? Like 16 cards? That's, that's, I, God, that's so fucked. I haven't thought about it like that. That's, that's actually what the ratios are. It's, the, N Nico drawing two cards in Marvel Snap is like drawing 15 cards in Magic the Gathering. No, like 12, 12, 16, 16% 16 of 16. 16 times 0.17 is 10. Sorry, it's 10. It's 10 cards, 10.2. It's 10. Math. I've never done math in my life. I'm not about to start. It's still fucked up, though. It's still an absurd number of cards. Is this deck not a meme? Chat, our deck has Mr. Negative in it. Of course it's a meme.
My gold negative and I won't take that slander. The untapped stats are the same as they've been for a long time, Ragnarok. It's Elsa, Elsa, Elsa all the way down. Says Mobius's play rate dropped. It has. Yeah, Mobius is sub 30% on the untapped stats these days. Mobius stonks. Mobius stonks way down. He pushed Wave out of the format. He's still, he's still there, but he's not omnipresent. Okay. Nico still hasn't hit the draw cards mode yet. So we could we could floop into Nico Nico draw Deadpool here. Crap. Okay. Um I mean, I'm definitely staying. I definitely have not been playing against much wave. Oh my God, it's a mirror match. Oh, it's a mirror match. All right, chat, Never mind. We got to look at those. We got to look at those untapped stats, chat. Marvel snaps a solved game. The only, the only deck in Marvel snap is this one. Cower in fear, mortals. Do you think they play magic? I think they play magic. I think they play magic every time. All right, all right. They laughed at me, chat! They laughed at me when I said, will Nico draw cards and sacrifice Mr. Negative? They said it couldn't be done. And yet here we are, live on television. Holy shit. Whoo! I don't know if this deck is good, chat, but it's definitely fucking great. Oh my god. Then. To the people in chat who are asking me why I didn't take other various lines, I was too busy making snap history to listen to anything that you have to say. Get back to me later. Oh my god, they gambled. They gambled and won. No! No! They're too strong. What a gamer. Oh. Gotta give it to him. Gotta give it to him. You know who else you gotta give it to, chat? These lovely adverts. And if you don't wanna give it to them, you can give your prime sub to me. Otherwise, we'll see you in 120 glorious seconds. What a what a fun game of Marvel Snap. Just a D light.
Oh, he's a bench. He said that non sarcastically. I would like the record to reflect that outside of our brief stint in the wave infested Eliath hellscape before Mobius released, I've largely enjoyed Marvel Snap for a long time now. Marvel, Marvel Snap has had a lot more good than bad since we started getting regular balance passes. Hey, Rhett, thank you for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. No, no lifestyle games are always good. Big agree. guess who are the biggest winners or losers of tomorrow's OT. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing I've said for the last two or three days now. If Elsa Bloodstone doesn't get a text box update tomorrow, it will be an incredible miss on their part. I am, I am not someone who often suggests cards quickly get changes, but I think we assuredly have the numbers at this point to show that Elsa probably needs a change. Like text box three down to two. I would be very, I would not consider them changing Elsa's power to be a meaningful change. At a, at a minimum, she should be plus. At a minimum, she should be plus, uh. Plus two. I think, I think Elsa giving plus two is probably still a top card in the game. I'm just going to get rid of Asgard. I already had my own personal Asgard. They're not going to risk them having one too. Hey, Xandar GG's. Good hits on the 50-50. It was a fun set. Have you been missing Psylocke? Not at all. This deck basically only ever wanted to play Psylocke in the games where... You basically only ever wanted to play Psylocke in this deck in the games where uh, you had turn three negative. And like, the big a big part of what makes this deck good is the fact that it's a real deck when you don't draw negative. Being able to magic into Null into Zola while you do Deadpool stuff is like quite good. Sometimes you'd Psylocke to Null Zola in 5-6. Sure. I don't think you really need that, though. Is also playable as a 1-1 one -one that gives plus 1? No, because Killmonger exists. This deck seems like it's as much a big destroy deck as it is a negative deck. That's a great assessment. Yeah.
My November card review video, yeah. And then when this gets blown up, it'll be doubled, which is fun. So this is 31, so it's gonna go to 60 or 59 here. <clears throat> and then we do this into this and just get them. They're gonna they're gonna win the right. Like a taskmaster here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Victory. Are there any 700 gold dull variants? Mo most of the dull variants that exist have been spotlight variants on weeks where there's no new cards, so I haven't been opening spotlights. There's a hip doll, really? I don't think I've seen that one. I probably have, it just didn't click it. What a hand. Oh, we want to draw Nico on destroy mode or Carnage this turn are the two best. Oh, I guess Carnage actually, because Nico on destroy mode. Oh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting copy the last card. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I wasn't expecting uh, to get uh, three another three power one. They time theatered Elsa. What a fucking gamer. Oh my god, and Nico lets them hit here and move off. Gross. Yeah, we need to draw Null here. And even even Null's probably not enough because we haven't blown up that much stuff and we blew up two negative ones here. Yeah, Null's actually only one, right? Or no, he's... We blew up two ones and a five and then minus four. He's a three. Ah, bounce before we show them more cards. Nico's like questing me. She does a new thing every time you read her. LOL.
Killmonger, and then if we draw, we're 50% to draw one drop next turn, Bass Forge Nico. If we hit, we hit a one drop, we'll be able to double one Carnage into the raft. Get our card, but it costs six, thanks to Mr. Jet Ski Man here. Variation, got it. Opponent snapped. Do I want to bet a 25 percenter that I <laughs> I draw? What's it called next turn? Maybe. Vision the Angela. I didn't want to give the vision two more. Maybe they're afraid of Shang Chi. Deadpool. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, we'll play one more and we'll snap them on one. If we win, if we win a four cuber here, we can get back in the game, but we do need to win a four cuber here. GP Stevie, thank you for the brand new prime. Appreciate that. Yeah, not a not a great opening hand for our hero in a game where we need to win a four cuber. Hopefully, hopefully they they leave. Rip. Peak, I choose you. Okay, okay. So you're saying so you're saying there's a chance. That's budget peak. <laughs> Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. That is Midnight Suns Deco in my deck list. Issue is Bobby is, is it? Well, egg will be okay. I need, I need, uh, I need to pump up my doll, right?
Hank, with how much they have committed here, I want to bail on Baxter building. Do we get Shang? We're definitely dead to a Shang-Chi jet. We're not, we're not at a point where we can play around stuff, okay? This is, this is our game plan. This is either good enough or it isn't. Nico moving mid is actually kind of funny. It gives us uh, five more center. So we'll be uh, 37, 39 there. I love the, the long tank before they eventually play Eliath. Any deck recommendations for collection level 95 or 957? Oh, 957. Uh, that really just depends on like what cards you have access to, right? Everybody, everybody's series three, four, and five cards look very different in the beginning. Victory. All right, and just like that, gamers, we're in it to win it. We're four to six heading into round four, so I have I have breathing room to retreat a game now. If this hand doesn't look good, I can make next game the game we push for. We got two shots at Nico B and card draw here, chat. Do I accept Nico copying Carnage as good enough? Or do I take one more attempt? Do we take the one in five on destroying negative? I think, I think I'm just supposed to accept that we can. I think I'm supposed to accept that second Carnage is good. Sorry, the 20 percenter is so low. Very little incentive to bast on one. much or making you play around her? I'm not sure I understand your question, GPCB. Do you mean, is she adding value to this particular deck or like, are you talking about like the format as a whole? And destroy. Yeah, I think she's quite good in destroy.
Mr. Negative literally doesn't have a text box here, right? I have a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, and a 3-3 three, three in my deck. It makes our cards look sweet. Look at look at our deck tracker, gamers. I think I I should step I should step them here. I think this is, I think this is the game. I should have stepped before this happened. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. I should, I should have stepped before, before last turn I was late. Jeff, I started watching you for the first time because of the drop event. Do you ever stop streaming? Your stamina is impressive. Well, this evening, my uh, my older two kids have a class at five o'clock, so I can only stream for another half hour or so. When drops when drops are done, our viewer count will probably drop off a bit from where it's been. So I will go back to what I referred to as more realistic hours once that happens. Which for people that are new to the content with drops and you enjoy having me here all day, typically when I'm uh, when I'm streaming during normal time periods, uh, I'll be live from about 9 a.m. Central till about 3 or 4 p.m. Central, so still six six to seven hours a day. My uh, my wife's very understanding of this job and understands the ins and outs so time periods like this where metrics are higher we make a point to you make a point to uh make it so i can put more time in oh the kids chess club this evening although honestly i might see we're still above three thousand people i might ask christy if she could field chess club tonight so we could run a little bit a little bit later God, I want, I want to play this. Am I playing this? I think I'm playing this. And we'll just kill Carnage or Venom or whatever next turn. Obviously, I can't kill this because I, I can't kill this because I want to um, get the bonus from Forge on it. I think we just do this. And it draws us cards and it makes our null huge. Pumping our doll, yeah, exactly. Snap. All right, Christy, Christy is going to manage. Managed drop off for the kiddos tonight, so uh, we are gonna keep running longer. Magic. Although, honestly, we probably just cut them off the Stark Tower bonus, huh? I guess I get the Stark Tower bonus for myself. I can do this. And then we'll go Null up the middle into Zola at left, right? Just 
systems go. I have 44 power and all on each side. We haven't seen a tech card or an Eliath out of them yet. Yeah, we might we might get priority to beat the Eliath here. Chop into their deck makes me think that they're not a Lion deck. There are a lot of these decks that are a Lion decks. This is a good example of someone losing the game because they don't understand how our deck works. If they, if they understood that our deck is looking to set up Null Zola into a clean path, they could a Lion here every time. But our deck is weird off meta mush, so they misplayed. If their last mystery card's a Shang-Chi, they could still get us, but otherwise they're about to get put in a trash can. What's going on, May Day 7? Thank you for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. To be fair, our opponent hasn't played Kitty Pride. <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of the builds of the opponent's decks have gotten rid of Kitty because she's awkward with the six drops. Oh, 29 points of stats. It's interesting. Hey, welcome back, Lucho. It's been a fun set. This deck's been uh, this deck's been much better than I expected. What are our what are our numbers look like? And one of our one of our losses was a mirror match, which is kind of fucking wild. Yeah, we're five we're five and three, we're five and two excluding mirrors. I guess that last one's probably out there, so we're six and two. If we pull the mirror match loss out. Average human torch deck is the Phoenix Force deck, which I think is usually a pretty good matchup for our deck. Oh, <coughs> our null plan goes over the top of what they're doing. What account do your next get posted on untapped? Every time I click, I get an account from like last year. So if you go here, the thing you need to keep track of is that um, there's a conquest and ranked tabs that are separate at the top. So like right now we're playing conquest, for example. I don't remember the exact situation we were in, Panda, but you, generally speaking, I, I favor getting Deadpool bigger faster. Getting getting Deadpool bigger also makes Null bigger. Ooh, are they a bounce gamer? Oh, you know what? <clears throat> This is actually kind of awkward, right? I think I think I'm actually going Deadpool into Carnage because my turn 5 is Iron Man and my turn 6 is Null, right?
All right, so I don't have I don't have magic, so I just like don't have room. I don't have room to play the Deadpool if I kill it and pick it back up. I guess I guess maybe I could make the assumption that I'm just not playing Iron Man. Yeah, it was not was just not playing Iron Man better than Maybe you're supposed to blow up the Deadpool again and then play the Deadpool this turn. I guess if I would have done that, I could have gone 20 power Deadpool plus negative here and then had a chance to spike Zola. Would have been quite good. This looks solid for us all the same. Oh, Ghost Torch mid. I wasn't thinking about that being their last card played. Yeah, maybe I am supposed to null left, huh? Oh my god, we win it by one. Close. Yeah, I should have I should have put null left. Today's feature location makes me want to break my phone. Why is that? It basically doesn't have a text box, right? Unless you were going to draw 100% of your deck anyways, having random bits of it get blown up doesn't really matter. It's just like Yandu, right? Like, it then it kind of feels bad to see, like, your good card getting blown away, but effectively it's no different than if you never drew it. In most games of Marvel Snap, there's going to be cards in your deck that you didn't draw. So you just think of it like you saw the card that was on the bottom of your deck in advance rather than finding out later when you didn't draw it. It's all about, it's all about perspective. Yeah, legitimately, it's actually an anti-Hella Tribunal deck because that's one of the few decks that does actually see its deck in its entirety basically every game. Yeah, it gives your opponent a little bit of information once you don't have it in hand, but. This is, this is some, some sweet nonsense going on for the opponent. I can, I can dig it. Opponent's that being said, I was getting, I was getting ready to leave before they stepped. Because we have all three of our good negative cards in our hand already. You were going to draw it. It's the top card, not the bottom. But that, that's that's the psychological part you're not understanding that you're hung up on and can't get over. I'm telling you, you need to think about the card that's getting destroyed as though it was simply a card you didn't draw. Like, if they told you it was destroying the bottom card, emotionally, it would feel slightly better. But functionally... Destroying the top card versus destroying the bottom card is the same in the end result other than something like Chavez. Like outside of exactly Chavez, it's functionally the same. Oh, snap. I just have them back here. Our hand's pretty good. Yeah, again, literally the, the number one thing I can hammer, and you, I, this, it's funny, it's funny that, um, this is a concept that people struggle with in every card game I've ever played. In, Ma in Magic the Gathering, it was super common. People just hated having their cards milled out. It's just a, th a thing that people despise happening. No, I mean, I don't. I don't think, I don't think it's about people wanting to be angry. I think it's a kind of abstract concept that people struggle to parse. Motherfucker. 
Yikes. At least the hand I'm giving them is shit. Hey, Spell Fry, thank you for the third of the year. I appreciate it. Welcome back. It's a similar psychological effect in a board game where you draw a card from a combat deck and your opponent tells you you took their card. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's a very, very apt comparison. contest left or center here. I guess we're still drawing a null, but I, ha I haven't blown anything up this game, right? Okay, they vet him for us. Oh, Nico! We needed Nico last turn, chat. We're just dead, unfortunately. I can't. I can't get this into here. You think they're gonna Zola? They could Zola, yeah. I could retreat, but I could also just stay and do this if they expect them to Zola. They could also just play Chavez, though. I don't know. Oh, did I need to put more stats here? How big is this? Did I need to put more stats here? I should have. I almost put the magic here, and I should have. Oh, we juked him. Couldn't, they couldn't resist. To be fair, I probably couldn't resist either. Some big, some big, some big braid thievery there. What's not even playing right I thought I might need more stats in the middle, but I really didn't if that was the play. All right, gamers, it's about that time. I think we're going to keep playing this deck until we take another L and then we'll play some more bounce, but we need to take another ad break before we do. I'll see you in 120 seconds. Don't go anywhere. We're going to play some more Nico negative destroy here when we get back. BRB. 
Subscribers, I'm gonna bounce for a minute. I'll be I'll be back in two minutes. What's going on, Fallen Olympia? Yeah, I'm dual streaming. Twitch allows us to dual stream now. So if you're on the YouTube side, don't forget to tap the like button on the broadcast. And anytime, anytime we'll be streaming on Twitch, we'll uh, we'll have us up on up on the YouTube.com Jeff Hoagland as well, just for anybody that prefers that platform. Hey, thanks for being here, making it possible, Cappy. Been a big, big couple of weeks for Snapple Appen in Hooglandia. Hopefully, hopefully we get drops with some consistency. Would love, love to see it every eight weeks or so. <laughs> Waiting on best. Want to try and catch Deadpool whenever possible with it. Lovely. Some cards here. I have an Iron Man in my deck to invert. This isn't great, but could be worse. Uh, Lizard Moby is probably Shuri. People often ask me, Jeff, how do I get better at Marvel Snap? And this is the number one answer I have for people. If you can't look at your opponent's deck list and see Lizard Mobius and go, this is probably Shuri, that's the thing you need to get better at. Unfortunately, without magic, we're probably about too little too late here. A Deadpool going earlier. Cuban bounce on this one. I'll give them their one Cuban bounce on this one, or will we? It's our our fifty percent, or that can give me pause. That's only like 22 in the middle. They have they have uh, Mobius out, right? So the negative draw doesn't really do much. Escape. What does Mobius do for sure? It's just a random hate card. It's also good into locations like Dream Dimension and Elysium, right? Mobius. Mobius is just like a variance reducer, essentially. Very rarely dead pulling on one, even when I have Carnage. Want to be able to draw Forge, Nico, or Bast. Snap. I'll snap them here. We have Deadpool, eat Deadpool into Mr. Negative. Snap. 
I guess I guess they're a Mobius deck, so maybe Mr. Negative draws a little bit worse. Alright, we need this to be a location we can play into. That'll do pig. All right, well, Sauron means we no longer have to worry about Mobius, which is nice. The invert our null here. I think we just do this, and then we hope to peel the... Uh, Oh, I could have played Forge up for free, and then we hope to peel the null. One in, one in four. Yes, yeah, sure, he is a deck that really hates playing in Street Dimension. For sure. All systems go. We missed on the null, which is unfortunate. I bet they boomer snap us here. every time <laughs> this is why these negative decks can be so good people just have no respect i could coin flip their taskmaster for eight cubes it's mostly a question of do i think this matchup is bad for me i wish i had played the forge because this puts us to 44 over here. Ah, that flipped for eight. I'm about ready to move on to the next deck. I am Iron Man. What a chode. <laughs> It's, it's so wild to me how many people think they're brilliant when they make a bad snap and then win a coin flip after their bad snap. Fucking, fucking gamers. Good, good mute equity on a match that I don't care about, right? This is more bouncer. Yeah, what's going on, Justin? Yeah, yeah, I'm dual streaming, so we're on Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. Copy something. Um, That's probably fine, because if I top deck Elsa, it's insane, right? I'm like copying forges, whatever. Niku is going to draw them cards. That's very good. I think I would rather have an extra forge than an extra Hawkeye here. Ooh, burning their Eliath feels good. And they don't have Reality Stone to deal with Barwith no name. your hood easy win easy win Eliath Eliath gamer lost lost their Eliath has no idea how to play the game for Sean thank you for thank you for the sub gamers I haven't had a chance to promote it because we've been we've been live all day but I actually just did a collab piece with Prashan. if you check out their their YouTube channel we talked about some things Marvel staff and content creation last night I tweet out some links when I'm done today. But they stream on Twitch as well. You should click the button and give them a follow if you're looking for another staff creator on occasion. Eliath Brain in a nutshell, yep. That's plus two. I think we can wait for better with the hood in hand.
Well, the current good Thanos deck, Atomic Snaps, is easily the most toxic deck right now. It's a prison, prison lockout deck. Make a demon here. Get Killmonger in this turn. Shields up. I think we'll do these as we continue to maintain priority. We'll snap them. They might feel good with a Killmonger this turn, and then we juke them on the left. Whatever happened to the first edition badges they told us about? They later updated that um, they were back burnering or potentially canceling that, I believe. It especially gets kind of muddy when you factor in, like, some cards go direct to Series 4. So it's like, do those cards just never have first edition badges then? Drawing Falcon and Bass doesn't actually accomplish anything here, right? Like, I could draw two, but I'm not actually going to do anything with them. So, I, I, I think we just do this, and then next turn I have Chavez and Zero Energy cards. Systems go. They haven't blown up much stuff, so I assume they're done here. Your reasoning behind the lack of bishop, there's just... Like, at this point, there's, like, six or seven different, like, why not this card inside of Bounce. Like, Bishop, Collector, Hit Monkey. There's so many good payoffs, right? Things that make numbers. That, like, the answer to why not play a given one is mostly, like, well, there's just not room. Yeah, Elsa's, Elsa's definitely the best one. Agree with that. And Hood, Hood is kind of a payoff in a way too. That's gone like in and out of these decks over the months. And the fact that um, Nico now exists, I think means Hood is ideal. I think the negative Thanos deck that's been going around is a good example of the exercise. If you take the stock best deck and fuck it up by three to four cards, it's probably still pretty good. In my opinion, the negative Thanos deck is not doing anything compelling or more powerful and is just worse than the established good Thanos deck. Negative Nico is a ton of fun. Absolute, absolute blast. Luke Cage and Hawk, so probably the Zabu deck.
Well, that, that just like... That isn't even real life, gamers. I think I'm gonna go... Forge into Kitty into Falcon. And give them a Falcon. Nico or Werewolf. I'd be very surprised if Werewolf is better than Nico, but I also expect Nick, uh, Werewolf to be very playable. Okay, I do this, and then next turn I have Kitty Pride, Iron Lad, and So I think what I actually want to do here is I want to make this Kitty really big. And then I do this over here. And then next turn, I play the little kitty here to round this out. And I play big kitty plus iron lad over here. Mm, I wasn't playing around Shang-Chi. I guess I should have been. Actually changes the dynamic here a good bit. Yeah, I'm aware of the cosmos there, chat. I just didn't want to give them cards with machine world. Maybe I should have. I guess we're kind of just flipping here now, right? Where are they playing to? I think I'm doing this and then I'm playing this somewhere. Does their deck run Doom? Not usually. Uh, yes, usually, actually. But this should be Doom on a tiebreaker, right? Because we're huge here. Ah, rip. Lost the fucking tiebreaker. Lost the fucking coin flip. Ah, oh, we lost the coin flip to our own goddamn card, too. That's so sad. I was expecting them to play here with man thing. And then we were flipping whether or not they would play to here or here. I should have I should have managed I should have managed priority into their doc into their Shang-Chi better on my Angela. I think that loss was on me. If I play if I play the Angela path so it doesn't die to Shang-Chi. I think we get them on that. We just kind of lost in the double double kitty sauce. Cosmo also. Cosmo and the other location didn't do us any favors, but I could have played around that Shang-Chi. Looking for copy or draw here on the Nico. Slide to the left, ain't it? I think adjusting Elsa's power does functionally nothing, and I would be very disappointed if that was the change that they made.
Shred him. God, absolutely, whoa, I don't know, I don't know what just caused that disconnect, but absolutely shredded there on every front. We got their Professor X out of that, we got, for those that missed it, their Professor X got hit, their Eliath got hit, and their Adelian put six cards into their deck and gave them three back out. Just big, brutal, savage wrecked energy. Tag Jeff as well, yeah. Yeah, Hotel, Hotel Inferno only works the first turn it flips up. Oh, shoot. Hold on one second, gamers. Declan get out the door. Oh, look at that. He went out the door on time. Good stuff. I'm just gonna Angela New York. I really don't want to play her into a face down location. It gives me a little bit of flex less flexibility later, but I don't want to gamble like playing her into a spot where I might not be able to play other stuff too after. Probably also a bounce deck, Forge and Korg. Beautiful Korg split. Punished for not playing to there, huh? Yeah, it's a good core grid. I have this one in uh, in inked. Oh, the border is green though. You. Confirmed a bounce deck, and they're gonna beat us into the white hot room. compete with that Let's see we'll see what Nico gets for us here and yeah, they have Elsa too oh, Niku. okay so they're gonna have their entire deck I guess I want my Angela to compete with this path that they're already competing in. Go from there. Thank you. 
these bounce matchups are so... <laughs> just like my head's like, uh, how big do they have things? What's in their hand exactly? Yeah, I think with them having Elsa and plus three energy, it's an easy, easy bounce here. Escaped. I think adjusting Elsa to only affect her current location is a pretty big miss of a change, and it makes me glad that random people aren't in charge of card balance. Like, making Elsa only impact her current location doesn't change her impact with things like uh, Kitty and doesn't change her impact with the decks that are like playing a bunch of stuff like Vision and others. It literally only changes her impact with exactly, um, exactly decks that are spreading out and playing to every board. I think Elsa's ability is fine i think it's i'd argue it's good and sweet and interesting design and it's just its number is just a little bit too big yeah people people are big like the better elsa decks are kind of already doing the change you suggested no i, I that's what i'm that's what i'm talking about i explicitly think reworking elsa is nonsense i think I think you probably start by making Elsa a 2-2 two, two, plus 2, and if she still ends up being too good at that state, you make her like a 2-3 plus 1. <coughs> I didn't think I had enough points to win the non-Elsa path, or the non-Angela path, Benis. I think, I think you... I think you just play, you play to every path and you win the two non-Angela paths because you had Elsa and I didn't. Victory. Correct. And that's, that's exactly correct too. Pragmatically, even if they did think they needed to rework Elsa, the soonest Elsa gets new text that isn't her current text box is four weeks after the 31st. Because patches get locked in a month in advance. So, if they decided they wanted to rework, which I'd be shocked if they've made that decision already, they have to have the work done by the 30th, and it doesn't get implemented until November 28th. So, fully, fully expect a plus two or something in the meantime. Or just anything. They might do nothing. Like, a lot of people are like, they're just not going to do anything. I think that would be a mistake. We'll see. We'll find out tomorrow afternoon. It feels, it feels like with Elsa's design, though, they designed her knowing they might need a safety valve of being able to adjust her via an OTA. I think increasing her mana would be a bad way to balance the card. You could certainly balance her that way, but I think it makes her functionally and fundamentally much, much worse than just making her plus two. I think she's a far more interesting and fun card as a 2-2 two, two, plus two or inevitably, or possibly a 2-3 plus 1, if 2-2 two, two plus 2 is still, still ends up being too good. So like, yeah, you could make her a 3 cost, but I also think that like, that's, that's lame. A lot of, a lot of the times when people suggest changes to cards, they like, want to suggest things that like, literally make the card unplayable. It's just like, what, what if we didn't? What if we, what if we left her still kind of okay? <coughs> Elsa Surfer, though. She wouldn't even be good in Surfer, though, right? Because, like, the Surfer deck doesn't organically fill lanes, and she doesn't work with Brood. Oh, they nico their Elsa. I can't believe they didn't snap me. Gamers, you should be snapping when you Nico your Elsa. <laughs> Just for reference. Snap, snap when you Nico your Elsa. Or before you Nico your Elsa.
Nico's putting a demon in my hand. Hood's putting a demon in my hand. I'll hide Forge over here. Next turn, we go demon, demon, Lady Sif Bast. Pray. So that's 14. Demon middle puts me to 13, 16. Over here I have three. They're probably filling. If they move Jeff and play a one energy card here, it goes to seven. That's plus four from where they're at, which is 25. I'm getting plus nine plus 12 is 26. So if they play even a two power card here after moving Jeff, they tie me. Oh, they have the premium Jeff split. That's so good. Yeah, I think we, I think we just gotta go. I think, I've talked about this before, I think Kitty Pride is probably a card that I expect to get reworked at some point. I think, I think her design, and while it's fun, is just like inherently just going to keep being kind of cracked with other things as they keep coming up, so. All right, gamers. At any rate, our viewer count has fallen off as we've crossed the five o'clock threshold. And I bet me also means I've been live for over nine hours, so. Those of you that still quite haven't left work, I'm going to go ahead and take my leave and sign off. If you want an easy way to support my content, I'm going to hit one more ad block on the way out the door. I'm planning to do a full day tomorrow. Hopefully, we have a sweet OTA update and uh, we'll be able to do some fresh brewing tomorrow night. If you want to see more of the bounce deck, it'll be up on my YouTube channel tomorrow morning as the highlight. And today, we had an awesome Phoenix Force Deadpool Nico deck if you hadn't seen it. So, thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you in the morning, hopefully. On the YouTube side, if you're still watching, tap the like button, please and thank you. We'll be back there again tomorrow too.